Well, hello there. All right, everybody. Hello and welcome. Welcome to another Fallout Watch Party. We're going to get this one uh, out there while it's still relevant. There was a decision made that this show would just all be dropped at once out of nowhere. And uh, so we're going to try to get this done by maybe next weekend. But here to help me for the first time on my air, please welcome my friend, Beard of Liberty. Welcome. How you I doing, am happy buddy? to be here. <laughs> That's um, right. Uh, I just want to go ahead and let everybody know that I uh, am excited to be here and that Admiral Teague did in no way try to have the ATF swat me so that I would no longer have a dog. That's right. That's right. And I didn't force choke you through the computer either. I remember to tell them that. No, <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> I've got some water here just in case I need it. Do, do, do not fail me again, Beard. Everybody <laughs> welcome. Do me a favor. Tweet out that the stream's live. Let people know. We're going to give you a chance to watch the show everyone's talking about. Beard here contacted me after the last one. You have a good deal of lore knowledge on this one. And how far did you go game-wise? Uh, see, I never played this, one and two. Franchise. I got into okay. it with uh, with New Vegas, actually. Uh, and then I went back and played Fallout 3. And then I've played Fallout 4. Uh, and I, I greatly love all three of those. Uh, I have plans to go back and, and play one and two. I think I've got them in my Steam library. That, But, you know, who doesn't have a backlog a mile long? Well, I don't have a Steam library yet, but I will soon. <laughs> you'll get there. You'll get there. You'll, uh, pretty yeah, soon you'll have there. a list of games and think like, why did I buy this? It, it's been here for six months. I haven't even touched it. Oh, I went down that road with Starfield. I played it for 12 hours and I'm like, I am so glad that I like am part of the uh, gaming club and don't have to own this. It was so worth the uh, 10 minutes <laughs> of buffering because I thought, like, do I really want to play this game? And like a couple of times, I'm like, oh, I'm going to play Tropico instead and run my island like the dictator that I am. But wow, <laughs> yeah, uh, Starfield, some people like it seemed like there was no middle ground. Uh, it was either people loved it or hated it. Did you even did you try that one? No, I haven't played that one. OK, uh, it was neither the best nor the worst video game ever made. Neither was, was that it the, the one that was like in development and super hyped for so long? That might be a few games, but that is true for this game. By the way, our poll's live. If you've seen it already, you can give it a grade. Grades can be changed. And uh, this time, we absolutely have the Watch Party link at the top. If uh, you can watch on two devices when we start in a little while, because uh, we're going to catch ourselves up to where we are at at Episode 4. And uh, then we'll roll probably at the half-hour mark of this stream. Uh, there'll be some chaptering. Don't worry about that. I figured out how to do that fancy chaptering. Um, and wow, people are giving it a B already, and it looks like we, it's gotten at least three votes, uh, two votes. Okay, so um, this episode seems to be mid, I don't know. I thought one, two, uh, and three were really good. I didn't feel there was a drop-off from one to two, but there was a change tonally to three. But I think that's our first one with a different director. I'm not sure. Um, now, I guess I'll throw it to you. Uh, this seems to be true to the spirit of the game. Are we doing things specifically from the game and meeting specific characters from the game? Or are we meeting characters that are akin to them and staying away from jerking around with the game lore? I mean, what? how deep are we messing around here? Are we damaging the game? Are we enhancing the game? What? Where are we going with this? Oh, that is asking a hot button question because even people who like it might not necessarily like it being canon with the games. But I, when I first watched this, I didn't know it was. I assumed it was its I own know pocket it's universe. But it is actually ahead. canon. Yes, it this is the furthest the timeline we've gone. of the last game by twenty years. I think this yes. is twenty ninety six. That yes. much I know. And the first part of our story. Here's the question. Do the bombs fall in 1960 or does it look like 1960 because technology stayed the same? It, it uh, the if I understand correctly, instead of like developing like the like transistor and microprocessors, There's, they went full right. on nuclear. So this is like if like, that kind of like nuclear vision of the future from the 1950s came true. And so that they just went with that and ran with that. Um, so it's like 20 something or other when the bombs fall. I forget exactly what. So it is 2077, as it says. Uh, yes. It says 2077 bombs fall on what some timelines. And the reason we're given that the aesthetic is still the same is that for whatever reason, um, nobody has uh, invented the transistor. Things are just a little bigger. They have 
betterish, more efficient vacuum tubes than we could ever make, mm-hmm. simply because they they stay with it. Um, um, what's uh, what what's explore? So we see them with uh, technology that's different, but they can accomplish most of what our t- our society can do, and maybe even a little more. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, basically everything is nuclear powered. Their cars have mi- like micro reactors in them. Uh, so when you see like the Red Rocket gas station, that's not actually a gas station. That's a coolant station. So they'd have to refill their car's coolant so they didn't blow up. Um, that's one of the explanations why even some of the radios in the games still work is they have nuclear batteries in them. So pretty much they, they fully embrace nuclear and put it in every bit of technology they possibly could. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess without uh, like microprocessors and transistors, it, it kind of makes it difficult to explain the AI that they developed for some of the robots. But you know, we're working off a video game here. There's a little bit more suspension of disbelief than normal for movies or TV shows. Okay, not a problem. I I get where you're coming from, uh, but it seems like as as we've gone through episodes, and I've watched one, two, and three now, and I I, uh, I gave episode one. A 7.5 out of 10, which I think is kind of fair, uh, especially like yeah. it had some work to do as a pilot. Uh, me personally, um, I thought that they leaned hard onto the uh, pop music of the 50s, and I still feel that way, right? Um, uh, I think maybe we're starting to get to the point of overdoing it, but I don't hate it. The music well, that's also good. influence pulled from the games because on the Pip Boy for your character in the games, you have a radio station. Right at least three Vegas and four and it, it pulls music from that time. Um, plus it's on, on any radio that's happens to be working throughout the wasteland. So it fits. Um, but yeah, some of it is a little on the nose, but they, they haven't used it to extensively montage, compress the story or get out of anything. We haven't mm-hmm. done anything as fucked up as a dream. We haven't, right. I don't think we've had a dream yet. And uh, we haven't done things that my friends who watch Star Trek Discovery with me will remember. The dream within a dream that has a dream inside it where the person inside the dream then has a compromised reality when they and they do not come out as many dreams as they go in. So you just don't know if anything happened or not. They don't wow. do this in this show. Well, th- that you haven't watched much Star Trek Discovery, have you? Oh, no, I couldn't their, their bring myself to, to watch get- one episode. They, their goal is to get out of every episode having told no story. Uh, they want to be everything and nothing at the same time. Uh, they always talk in the kookiest of edge talk. So it raises... They, but these are all things that don't happen in this show, by the way. It seems like these guys have sort of a mixed reputation because they... Did they they cleaned up J.J. Abrams' mess in Westworld or were they in it with J.J. to create Westworld, the people who made this? I don't actually have the answer to that. I don't know. They are associated with the new Westworld, though, which which kind of comports with this universe. I've liked yeah. every story. Yeah, I've I've liked every story that we every every aspect of the story rolling out. If there's one glaring thing that jumps out at me, I will say this: Titus can't fucking act. Uh, Titus can't oh, uh, fucking act. Uh, Maximus, Squire, who get, uh, Maximus. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Titus, Titus is a great actor and a real terrible. Ch- uh, Twitter troll on the yeah. uh, level of Tuvok, k- keyboard tough guy. Um, uh, yeah, Michael Rappaport. He he was fun for a long time. He's Dick Ritchie. We'll always love him for that. But yeah, don't 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 follow him on Twitter. Uh, but there, he's there's, good in that role. There, but uh, there's a t- lot about Maximus. Maximus that, yeah, there's a lot of shortcomings with his character, and I think most of the shortcomings come down to uh, as somebody uh, that I was on a stream with. I uh, I think it was on with. Uh, Leon on Birds of Paradise, and they were, we were saying that there were too many cooks in the kitchen, both in writing and directing. So you get tonal shifts and failures with character that otherwise you might not get with a more solid showrunner handling everything. Um, but yeah, Maximus. I mean, I don't. I've come off as sounding like a Maximus apologist because I'm trying to find a reason in universe well, that he would be like is that. Fine, but I, yeah. I feel the actor is expressionless. Um, I out of all stories in this universe, the Maximus story is the one that maybe needs slight forgiving. Like we're still giving him enough rope at episode three, but this I mean we're gonna be halfway through this, right? There's eight. So in this episode, we should start to see him tack towards some sort of traits. 
All we know so far is that the night who get, who he got the armor from, while that guy was a dick, Titus didn't exactly do what he was supposed to do in that situation, did he? Uh, well, yeah, no, but I can over. see. I can see why he would do that because the, well, the, the brotherhood in this, real, yeah. uh, I'll try to be brief. The brotherhood in this is very much more kind of like church based, like they're dogmatic. They're more kind of like ritualistic. And right before that happened, Titus told Maximus, you earn the armor through acts of bravery. And then he turned and Maximus sees him as like the most pious and dogmatic of these people. That's why he kind of like sees himself greater than everybody else. And he had right. this knight that earned his armor tell him you have to earn it through acts of bravery who then turned around and ran away from a bear when he's wearing basically a, a tank a, like tank armor on him so in maximus's head again i come off sounding like a maximus apologist he thinks that titus didn't actually earn that because he's, he's a coward and so that's how he justifies sitting there and watching him die yes it's a yeah, failure no, in his duties with, yeah even with what i know you can see that the, he was he wasn't the greatest knight he's like wash my jock yeah. right um he's a real dick uh, mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, like, it would seem to be the one logical mistake we've got so far is you could have easily just put off communicating for a little while since he pulls the Han Solo lousy conversation anyway thing. Anyhow, yeah. he, he could have waited a while to answer it until he figured out what to say to them, because like, you know, like I've accomplished a couple of things since the night whose armor this was died, including repair this communicator. Uh, you know, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I, I feel like I've earned this armor through uh, axe combat, but uh, you know we we did lose uh, Titus early, early on. He uh, yeah. he really did a terrible job fighting a bear, and I mean he also he had to be sort of a poor combatant or a poor fighter to lose that that battle with the yeah. bear. Didn't he? Yeah, he, he seemed like uh, Titus was a character that a oh, knight right. that just kind of went out there and like put on a show and didn't actually have to see any combat. Um, but I will say one more thing about Maximus. Again, it sounded like a Maximus apologist. Somebody else pointed out to me, right. if you start looking at these characters, if you know the games, like as like typical Fallout character builds, Maximus is a luck build. Like sometimes the things work in his favor, sometimes they really don't. And like he doesn't really have a ton of decision making control over it because he's not a bright person. Like he's an idiot savant uh, trait character. <laughs> yeah. And so when you I'm see that and you start watching like, his 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 I'm behavior just, throughout the series, it makes a lot more sense. Well, he's intimidating and frightening like me. Uh, you know, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what, what you're talking about. Next? <laughs> Yesterday, I was really pleased when Bird of Prey 5 was on here. And I don't know what's going on as far as youtube they seem to love me on the weekend if there really are 78 of you here hit those like buttons let me know that you're for real spam some emojis and meanwhile i want to say hi to radioactive hi to ray lucard um it, uh it's nice to see you guys um i really am glad you're here uh i'm just i'm going to the stream labs to see uh jacob ironside edge of time thank you so much for being here ray lucard thank you for being here uh, ladies, bots, and gentlemen, uh, welcome. Mark Harkness, hell. Mark, can you get me an ion pod and get a reading on the 356 live watchers we're having now? Uh, now, Beard of Liberty, I know that you are beloved, as, as am I, uh, but <laughs> something tells me that there's uh, we're, there's no way we're drawing the kind of people that Doomcock are. So uh, wh wh what are we going to do uh, except go on? Some of you are real. Please, some real likes to validate you are here. Because the last time this happened, they stripped away my views. Uh, it seems as though someone like Paramount is determined to destroy my work every Saturday now. Is, isn't that something? I must, we've really scared a few people. Or, hey, now I'm huge. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, it's, it, it, is this unusual or what? This is the, well, welcome, to, welcome to, uh, to Saving Star Trek. This is what we do here. We get, we get bot swarmed. Fun fact, vacuum <laughs> tubes are inherently more radiation hardened and tolerant than semiconductor technology. Huh, you can't drop it as easily, really? though. I had a vacuum tube amplifier because I play music, right? And uh, man, I guess the head of my amplifier weighed like 60, 80 pounds. That was, that was some mm. crazy shit. It was really, really heavy. Like, you know what? Let's call it 40, but it felt like 60 after like 10 minutes and 80 after like 20. And you yeah. have to like drag that around. And like, let me tell you something, your average hardworking rock band, nothing more infuriating and insane than having to drag and do like, like what would be moving day for everyone else before and after you entertain people while people like, 
You know, I mean, they, they have varying levels of, of, of enthusiasm. It's great. People come out for live music. Keep doing it. But that, that musician is also doing the job of mover twice and going home of slightly buzzed and getting like go, going to work with a hangover the next day. People are like, yeah, I, oh, I've, I've never toured. I've never toured, oh, but I'm a drummer I've and I have played live a few times. And let me tell you, the setup and teardown is it's almost twice as much of what you're playing. The reason why the Rolling Stones played so much is because other people do that for them. Yeah, I, I, Ty, Tyrus has a good point here. That was no ordinary bear. It was a rad bear. Titus, can you start uh, 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 analyzing the probes out there? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it looks like seven likes. I would think that with 442 people watching, we could get a few more likes. This is going to be uh, really wow. rough once. Well, you, you know what it is? Uh, I think we made Paramount mad. And uh, yeah, I know it just it, it doesn't it doesn't track with 441 people who would stick with me this long, does it? But what yeah. usually happens is the watch hours and stuff. Guys, I'm going to do something no other YouTuber does. And, and we, we will start the watch party. Believe you me, uh, that's that's no big deal. But uh, I'm going to show you guys something uh, that I guess we would call shocking. And, and I don't know. It, 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 it just nothing here tracks with reality. I'm going to do no one else will do this. But uh, let's take a look right here. Uh, this is are you familiar with what they call the analytic beard? I know a little bit about them. I don't run my own channel, so I don't see them behind the scenes like other guys do. Look at this analytic. You can see the one, two, three, four is for hundreds. There are allegedly 442 people watching live, uh, but there are only 19 views, and I've only accumulated six and a half, uh, almost seven minutes, like less than a stairway. Oh, wow, it just jumped up. All right, maybe there are a lot of people here. Uh, I don't scoff at the fact that you might be here, but... Uh, we've seen this one before, uh, you know, this is how they draw us in. Like they said, in full metal jacket, I've seen this you know, before. One of these days, this is going to happen legit. You're going to scoff at it and okay. people are going to get pissed off and leave. You know what? Uh, the bots all left at once last time when I started showing new track paraphernalia and talking about, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. When I started showing classic track paraphernalia, you can't get new track paraphernalia. There is none, but, uh, I guess, um, what I really should do is let you uh, go with your, your explanation of uh, what do you think of this question here? That, that bear, it was horribly scarred from radiation. It looked fucked up. Are we to assume that it was better or worse off from what happened to it? Was it a super bear or was this guy just an unworthy? Like he, he was, did he have his worst day? Was he unworthy? I don't, I don't know. In, in game. So I'm going to base everything from there. Cause it's, that's obvious what they're pulling from in game. Those that would be called a Yao Guai. Uh, but yes, it is basically a, a, a rad bear. Uh, and it, it's hard to, most things that, that are like that, the abominations, they call them in the universe are mutated to be stronger. So yes, I would expect it to be stronger than your average bear, despite looking so sickly, but at the same time, Titus is wearing a suit of armor that is basically the equivalent to driving around in an armored personnel carrier right so it, it's hard to balance it out i mean in game if you have a suit of armor in uh, in your level one and you come across a yagua you're gonna have a bad time but you know level up a few times then you can go toe to toe very easy and a few more times and then you just laugh it off you don't really care about it so yeah using game logic i mean it could work either way so would you say titus uh had earned the contempt of maximus he was not I think simply I think simply because he sent Maximus into the dark cave instead of going himself boasting about acts of bravery and then running away instead of actually fighting and like actually trying to hold his own. Yeah, I um I enjoyed the episode but I did snicker a little bit when that happened cuz I was like he chickened out and he ran away he used to fight another day brave 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 so Titus you know it's like what the fuck? <laughs> it was funny though. Uh I I will say this that sequence with his being a coward and all that it was it was funny. It was fun. Yeah, I mean, it was funny. And some people don't like the humor in it and just granted some of the humor and satire didn't land quite right but the Fallout games have always been satire and humorous and in a very dark sort of way so when people act goofy like that it didn't feel out of place to me so yeah i kind of laughed at it too guys do me a favor uh tweet out that the stream is live so that we can get some real people here uh but yeah last time i just i had to uh member member the stream uh just to protect myself from the analytic someone is really like 
that's a, that is effort, isn't it? Like that is like do you think we made people mad with the new trek uh parties and the boasts that we could that we have done damage to new trek? You think that might be what it is? You had to have done <laughs> something to attract this much attention. Regularly now. Regularly. The <laughs> most hated, influential, over oh wow. Uh you know what? Um uh <laughs> you like Star Trek too, right? You all, you're yes. also a Star Trek fan, right? All right. Yes, um, you, know, you, know, you know what? Is it possible that V'ger is taking an unwarranted risk? <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> artificial intelligence. Uh, for, you know I, what? I'm responsible for, 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 for 13 real lives and 442 bots. Everybody's <laughs> worried about Skynet. We should we still be worried about V'ger. Let's be honest. It's V'ger. V'ger is, yeah. I mean, honest. You know what would have been a little cooler, though, is if V'ger had been Voyager 1. The one that was actually out there and on its way at that point. Yeah. And um, I guess Star Trek canon had departed from our canon, but like real world events, uh, Star Trek canon had departed from our history, better way of putting it. But like the real events don't start to pile up against what what we would see as normal until like after the Gary 7 mission or something. Like by 1979, we, if we were like, thrown back into the continuity of Gene Roddenberry Star Trek, we would notice several major differences, like that World War II seems to have been like 12 years longer in Star Trek and, and other oh, stuff oh, like yeah. that. It, it definitely d diverted because I think, it, uh, well, I forget what the riots were that they mentioned, uh, like they go back and visit in Deep the Space. The Bell Nine. Riots. Yes. Those should be happening like right now or should have already happened. So, yeah, it, it's it's kind of interesting, especially <laughs> it, that had to happen. <laughs> Natural stupidity. <laughs> hey, you know what? If you're naturally watching, if you're if you're an organic being naturally watching this, welcome. And you're not. You're anything but stupid. You've made the right choice and helped me strike a blow against our corporate overlords, who I think have something to do with the fact that you found out we're here, whether they put you, sent you here or not. But uh, okay, so we've got the rad bear. We've got the surface dwellers. The surface, it's a little more fun, slightly less radioactive take on the Mad Max world. We've got yeah. a little bit of well, the, the the biosphere is not completely destroyed like in Mad Max. There's some bugs, there's some critters. You may not want to eat everything you see out there. The vault dwellers are enormously sheltered. Um, right. I don't know if she could be allowed to go back. She's been living and eating out there. She's she's building up some radiation too, but but yeah. but not De to the extent of these people who've been up there forever. Right. Uh, depending on the vault uh, and their protocols, because they're all different, different experiments and there's some control vaults. Yeah. Some of them wouldn't let her back in just because they couldn't risk contaminating any anybody else. Right. Her vault, but her vault would seem uh, more than eager to let her back in uh, because she is going out there to kick some ass. We found out recently uh, the overseer's name is what uh, Kyle McLean, that was his real name, but his overseer McLean. And, um, her name's Lucy McLean, which makes her mm -hmm. the daughter of John McLean, which kind of, I guess. So now we're in a shared universe with 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 uh, with um, Die Hard, which would mean we're also in a shared universe with Commando. So I like that. I mean, so I hold on. Does that mean that Fallout is a Christmas series? And also uh, that <laughs> this is what happens when Valverde starts World War III, because General Arius, obviously, his not being restored to power when John Matrix kills him and. Bennett, possibly the greatest human being to ever live. Um, uh, that probably is what sends the world down a bad path. But that's just mine. Hi, Sammy Three Pete. Welcome. It's nice to see a new name. Uh, Joy, uh, uh, do you know Sammy? Uh, yeah, I've been on a couple of streams with him. Over Sammy, there, with, uh, welcome, Roman. Feel f great avatar. Feel free to join the fleet. Uh, we're going to be tearing into Avatar in about six more minutes, uh, so that we go on the half hour. It makes chaptering easy. Uh, you know what, which is this new thing I'd like to do, but, uh, so, all right. So Titus was a dick. He didn't exactly get what was coming to him. The show didn't do the greatest job. Like you would figure that he'd be so in awe of him that, uh, he would just kind of go with it, but he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't take the easiest, most logical path to how you would deceive people about the manner in which you came across this armor. He seems to have created a few problems for himself, but hey, we, whatever, it's enjoyable. Uh, we're gonna. It has not. It's been anything but boring so far. Uh, right. And let's. Uh, and uh, it's been logical. Nothing has hurt my brain. Um, right. It hasn't been stupid. 
Uh, the expectation is not super high, but I guess was the bar set by Halo for this? <sighs> Probably. I mean, in so many Halo was different absolute fandoms, shit, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't even bring myself to watch it. I knew it was. As soon, soon as I saw the first preview for the first season, I thought, I'm done. I'm out. There That's were one of my favorite defiant. games. But that Halo stuff back here. They've been highly dedicated in the game to not showing us the face of Master Chief. So what do they do in the uh what did what what do they do in the in the in the in the show, of course, but like I guess episode one, like within a few minutes, right? He just tears off yeah. his mask. Well, even that that aside, because I, I understand how some people can see that as a nitpick that doesn't matter. So like, pushing that aside, he never acts like Master Chief throughout the entire se- series anyway. So it's a totally different person. If they just wanted to write a different character in that universe, I think more people would have been on board. But, you know, this yeah, seems the I norm. Think... This seems the norm now for, for stuff. It's like it has to pass the woke sniff test. I'm sorry, I'm doing my new way to like uh, count a couple of Mississippi's thing before I uh, jump uh, jump into the conversation. I want to make sure uh, you you complete your thought. Um, oh no, I appreciate it. I would ask this. Um, I got in a little trouble in comments. I don't know how far people watched into the show, but uh, people said and we got just enough time to get this in. People said episode one was woke and that they couldn't take it. And I think what happened was uh, a series of events culminated all at once where um, she wins a fight, right? So a woman beats a man in a fight. Uh, we see the second uh, like physical altercation of the, uh, of the episode. This one after the apocalypse where the Brotherhood of Steel is jumping in a new guy. That's basically what it is. This looks like a gang jump in. They're jumping him in. They're punching the fuck out of him. But uh, if you don't pay attention, you would never realize some of the people jumping them in are also, they're also black. So it, yeah. it, it, it's NBD uh, in every single way. So um, yeah. there, there, nothing here to get excited about, nothing here to worry about. Um, but then as that's going on, interwoven into it, the fight culminates at the house and then the vault and then the Brotherhood of Steel thing advances a little further Titus is not a great actor, but his character is pretty good. And then when we go back to the vault, um, Leslie Uggams sort of woman explains everything. And all that happens in like two minutes. So if you were the kind of person who was predisposed to blow up if something was woke, it may have seemed that way. So here's my question. Do you think it was that was that part at least was woke? And hello, radioactive, my friend. Uh, I think just in general across the series, there are certain check boxes that were checked that you would expect but they never put them in your face. They never go off on how one character might be this, that, or the other, or the race, this, or interracial marriage, that, or the other. They didn't put it in your face. They just let it be part of the world. And I'm totally okay with that. I put it this way. And I think it might've been too strong because it really might, it might, it might actually be upsetting to some people to have it put this way. But I feel as though when they sat down to make this show, somebody was like, so uh, I live in the real world. Anyone else? And people are like, yeah, 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 me too. And he's like, all right, I've noticed that if we want our show made, we have to uh, keep the people who are just basically the Twitter trolls of this world happy. And by do it, but to do that, what we need to do is in our show, we have to uh, say and do certain things to keep people more or less off our back and from being too crazy. But they don't stick around or pay attention for a really long time. So if we front load this shit and get it out of the way in about 10, 12 minutes, we can just keep walking by. So imagine this, if you would, a woke is our superior officer. There's not a shitload we can do about the fact they're here. They're not going anywhere. We don't like them. We don't like the way they do things. But because this is the military slash Hollywood, we can't walk by woke and not just like we we try to look away while we salute. You know what I mean? Like we don't want to say (laughs) hi. You know, it's like, like, like Colonel Woke is a scumbag. He'll yell at you for like, you're like, it's like, you know, you're pulling extra duty and he'll still yell at you for your, your uniform being dirty because you work so hard. You know, he's like one of those <laughs> kind of scumbags. Yeah. You get what I'm saying here. Yeah, so, no, absolutely. So it's like, it, it doesn't even snap off a brisk one. It's just like a Han Solo-ish kind of salute as it walks <laughs> by, just hoping to go about its business. And I guess here and there it does it again. But I said it saluted wokeness and moved on. And I also uh, I said it was the first time I've seen something, quote, go woke, quote unquote, and then self-correct. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right. It, it seems like 
after the, that moment, which like we're, we're, we're grown men, we can admit that there was some wonkiness there to it. It wasn't terrible or story killing, but we, I think we were both a little bit like, what's what's going on in this one minute of seems like it's yeah. really. Uh, and then we start to get context and it calms down really fast. Yeah, really fast. Uh, and, and, I mean, e even early on, Lucy's abilities, they, they're explained in her interview, that, like that she's she, trained in things in the vault. So. It, it makes and certain abilities that she has later on more, more understandable. And her adversary, horribly scarred, looking terrible from radiation, might not be really that strong. We don't know. He, we just know yep. it's fucked up. These people invaded the other vault. They might have taken damage doing it. Uh, the uh, way she beats him, she doesn't quite take him out in one punch. He comes back looking all ghoulish and grimy. But it was luck and resourcefulness and being in her own environment and knowing where to reach out and grab something that saves her life the first time. So... That is like it's the the difference between this and the level of wokeness we have in a show that was supposed to be good but wasn't close to it, like Moon Knight, where Scarlet Scarab source character, that little woman, and I don't mean this in this disparaging way. She was small, she was female, she uh straight arms a few men. That doesn't happen in this. So yeah. And I'm, I have to remind myself that I've seen the entire series, so I've tried not to give certain things away. But yeah, overall, right. nothing that would fall in the, quali the, the the quotations of woke, nothing is ever put in your face and made it sound like they're preaching to you other than just trying to tell you a good story. So anybody that's worried about that is a little too sensitive, in my opinion. Right. The, uh, this actually, uh, what's more frightening is the way they use so much music is a sign of maybe a shaky story more than other things. But they seem to be becoming aware of that and tapering it off. There wasn't as much in episode three, uh, right. although we're getting more into the meat of the saturation. story. Yeah. So let me jump onto my Amazon here. I have this queued at uh, zero, zero, zero point five seconds. The screen is completely black. Fallout episode four, the ghouls. Uh, I think we have a pretty good idea what this, what these ghouls are and what their deal is. We we know what it is. It's it's this red skull looking guy who we saw from before the apoxenix and uh, what his life is like now. And we really get deep into what it means to be a ghoul. Uh, I I enjoyed this one. I guess most people have watched it. Uh, we could talk as we go, but right now at 32 minutes, uh, 33 really of this stream. I'm going to roll the episode and uh, we'll comment as it goes. Uh, if the uh, subtitles aren't on, I'll turn them on. Uh, here we go. Uh, lights, camera, and action on this 48 minute and 40 second episode. Of All right. Sorry, guys, I'm just trying to get my source volume to the point where I, I won't start yelling at Beard by mistake because it's so loud. <laughs> that tends to happen during watch parties. I'm going to pull that up on my phone here. That way I don't accidentally cross any audio over. I think I have it set up so it shouldn't, but I just don't want to risk it. I love this. Uh, was it called the 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 gulper? It it had yes. human fingers for teeth. Does that mean it started out human and anything could happen here? Uh, I don't think the fingers were actually part of the original design because it was more just kind of like a cross between a frog and a salamander in the original it's games. But I, it was a nice nails. touch. It was a nice touch. Made it extra nails. creepy. I watched it at like one one hundredth speed. They have fingernails. Oh, oh, I know. I, I, it definitely made it extra creepy. It's gross in a good way. And here's the cockroaches that uh, now jam with Keith Richards. <laughs> what kind of car is Keith driving, you think, at this point? Is it Dodge Darts still around? Perhaps he has a uh, a Nissan Sentra? Like, what, what's the unkillable car now? No, I wouldn't even know. I mean, if he's still around, anything could be around, let's be honest. Oh, if he's I, still around I also, that's good evidence for ghoulism. Uh, yeah, you know what? I do think I want to see the stones when they come around now. <laughs> so I don't know how much of this imagery relates to the game. And I don't know that we're, we're free to kind of pick from any Fallout game we want, because we haven't heard of Vault 33 till now, right? 
You've got well, they're always adding new it. vaults. They're always adding new vaults. Uh, and kind of the games have always added new ones and retconned the number of them. Um, but this area here is closer to the area that where Fallout 1 and 2 happened on the West Coast near L.A. So that my name is Roger. Is that the ghoul? What, that guy right there, the cowboy? Yeah, because, uh, yes. or is that just somebody? Okay, yeah, I was just making sure here. Because I still yeah, keep that's, one that's cool. ear, one ear phone off uh, my ear so that I can have some semblance of how loud I'm talking. <laughs> I do the and same. Thank you. Yeah, I, you got it. You do enough. Uh, the best way to do a watch party I found was two devices with uh, one I would put earbuds in and then I'd put my cans over it and only put one earbud in. <laughs> <laughs> I've done something it's like that perfect. before. Perfect. Yeah. So the guy they're walking up on saying, My name is Roger, that's also a ghoul. And he's further gone. He's right. closer to being feral. Right. Now, what does that mean, going feral? Basically, all their humanity is gone and they've just become mindless, basically, kind of uh, typical movie zombies. Would you be like a grup from Star Trek TOS on the episode Miri, where they go to the planet where this has basically happened to them? Oh, my TOS knowledge is more rusty than all of my other Star Trek knowledge. In the episode Miri, they find a planet that's Earth-like, but they tried to unlock like the secret to immortality rather than having a nuclear war. But what happens is uh, once you hit puberty, uh, you can become an insane zombie who goes on a murder-death-kill rampage and then uh, okay. whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, kind of like that. Now, in the universe, ghoulism is not fully understood because some of them, like the ghoul of proper uh, Walton Gog is there. He, uh, some of them never go feral and some of them go feral right. almost instantly. Um, so it's well, not it really known like, what, what well, the answer is. they all co at the same time when, when the apoxenix happens. And here's, here's the analytic guy still not making sense. The 52 views <laughs> I believe in the 37 minutes. I believe in the 441 uh, guys, 11 likes, uh, you know, it's nice to have, uh everybody here but you know this is not normal stuff I, great performances here really all the acting's really good in this that yeah. i've seen so far aside from maximus i think maximus is a really bad actor i'm sorry yeah i like the character i dig where they're going with him i think the actor is probably better than what they were letting him do. I think they were giving him sort of direction that was cross between like Lucy and somebody who was more competent because Lucy's kind of like this starry eyed sh shut in. She doesn't really know the world. And I think that's also kind of how Maximus right. is, but it's not played well. So it, I don't know thing, if it's some, acting or directing, but it is definitely one of those. He kind of always walks around and he's going to get the same criticism I give Ray. And is this merciful, I guess, right? Yeah. He's I mean that's that's I that's kind of seen in the uni in the universe. Like, don't let it's kind of like you see something like a loved one turn to a zombie. Take them out before they fully turn. So Although, yeah, he, he didn't he's love this guy. Want... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I was about to say he didn't love this guy as you're about to see. He's using him as a resource. Oh, <laughs> I thought that's just like one of the things he was thinking was I'd want this, someone to do this for me. I or mean, just... yes. Kind of like that Everything as well. Goes hand in hand for him. He's got no moral problems with it. He's in the clear. It's like, it's like, gee, I needed some of these teeth, and this guy just happens to be going over the edge to uh, no one would want to be alive anymore anyway. Yeah, you can see that he does hold on to a little bit of his humanity uh, because he's still kind of torn in some situations. He definitely leans more towards the ghoul just survive in the wasteland side in, in almost everything. But yeah, he's... I still, ugh. he's I've, I feel like he was yeah. honorable enough to off this guy to be nice, though. Like, he yeah, might have see, been hungry. Does he need to eat this guy, or is this serving a purpose? This might be a nod to the cannibal trait in the games, but there is a theory in the universe of the games where you can stave off going feral by continuing to indulge in human things such as eat, because ghouls don't need to eat or drink. It's just something they enjoy. Uh, and this but guy is clearly addicted to all sorts of weird things. I, I see. I that's, don't know. That's that's uh, 
I don't have an explanation for that. Degoulify my ghoulification. I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we're trying. There's a lot. There's a lot put forward in this show that is not answered in the show or in the games. So I don't know. It could be actually now that I think about it, because the gulper smashed those vials of that stuff he was taking. And this right. guy oh. had a bunch of empty vials next to him, so he might be thinking he's got it in his system and he's using it to, like, whether that's something a ghoul needs to not go feral, I don't know, they haven't explained it yet, or he's just addicted to a chemical. Maybe he's yeah, trying maybe. to eat this flesh to stave off his uh, his side effects. I think he was, yeah, he was. He seemed to be, uh, like, eating his liver. He was Hannibal Lectoring him there. He wanted wherever, like, the repository in your body for most chemicals right you seem to be going mm -hmm. for the most he didn't just consume the whole guy he was like you know he wanted a specific part right and like he said in that one episode when she shot him with that trank dart that's a, a small drop in a big uh, bucket of drugs so he's probably addicted to all sorts of things I'm just going through the suspects of who would bot swarm me. I don't know. You deal with that side of things a lot more than I do. This okay, I will say also in a show called You. The Zach Cherry actor, he's all right. Okay, I'm sorry. What were you gonna say? Go ahead. I was just gonna say it. It this is not a fat shaming thing, but it is a little unbelievable to me that there would be overweight people in a vault where your food intake and your exercise is, is extremely controlled, even with bi like biological genetic tendencies towards that. I just don't know. I gotta. Be it's honest. a small yeah, thing. I don't right. really care, but it, it does stick out to me. You're right. I mean, this is supposed to be this tough place to survive, and here we have a guy who's just, you know, living largely. I mean, even though they grow a certain amount of their own food, they have to ration that and only let out a certain amount. But again, I said that's that's a nitpick. It doesn't really bother me. It just stuck out. I got to say, this guy was his name, Moises Ar 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 Arias, that played her brother. Right. Uh, he did a good job. And I know you haven't seen much of, of everything yet, but yeah, he was it's a good cast playing casting. playing it as PTSD has made me go robot. Yeah. And he's also well, it, thinking very bi in a very binary manner. It's just like, you know. Maybe we should just delete the people who messed with us. And it's like, they're all like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Well, he, and he's somebody who never has really engaged with reality. Like, as he said, when he, they were punishing him, he, he, his like unsatisfactory performance with every job he had, because he doesn't care about any of them. And now his like this malaise, his, his world of just re relaxation and not caring has been shattered. And he's having to deal with that. Isn't it amazing how no one went into the theater to watch the show out of the hundreds and hundreds of people watching? It made no impression at all. <laughs> Thanks, everybody who really is here. See, look, yeah, he's got like the guys, he's collecting people's like kidneys or something. Yeah. You can find a bag or something to keep that in, you gross bastard. I mean, it's I don't know. Let's try out there. Maybe you want to turn them into jerky. Do you want dust on them? I don't know. He's a ghoul. Maybe he doesn't care. Yeah. 
it's nice little touches from the games. The the rad sound effect coming from a Pip Boy, spot on. And especially if you're playing survival mode, sometimes you have to decide: do I drink the ra- irradiated water? Yeah, it's only liquid because there's some freaking uh, like antifreeze in there. It's green and disgusting. And a lot mm-hmm. of uh, 450 again, two weeks in a row. What are the odds, huh? What are the odds? You're just that popular with ghost people that don't actually register as being here. Who are you going to call? Yeah, it's like, hello. Like, you think that, uh, hey, Nerd Portal. Yeah, um, exactly. Why are they doing this to me, Nerd Portal? Edge of time, hello. Mark Harkness is here. We're picking up the beacon from the Botany 500. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I remember, I know what Botany 500 is. I thought the Baldars and most of the cast are too fat for the given story. You may be right. Inhale Tim. Yeah. Everybody hit the like button. Create that cryptocurrency that only hitting the like button can create. Why wouldn't you mint your own money if you could? You can. Go ahead. Do it. Wow. He's had plenty of time to perfect his cowboying skills. Mm-hmm. I like that they they managed to weave that into the story because it like oof. It's like the first time that he actually respected her. But he shows it in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Maybe even fishing, he didn't feel like she had much to worry about, but that was disgusting. You couldn't take the pinky? It's a good line. Gore really just, oh, there's so much gore in this. It's, it's a good show, though. I mean, that is also accurate to the games. A lot of people were afraid that they were going to kind of neuter it. Because it is kind of this weird juxtaposition of like like this clean, friendly 1950s ideo- ideological vault living versus the world and the violence out in there. You know, YouTube, get your shit together. And welcome here, everybody. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> Finger licking good. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, the link's right there. Go ahead and jump in the theater. shoe maintenance all right you know what um they've achieved like david lynchness why did it do that <laughs> you know what? I gotta be honest. I was ready for them to lighten up and have a few laughs, though. This episode's been f- m- much more fun. Like, we started out like grim and very, very serious for a while there. After we, ast- this was paced like blue velvet, kind of real blase and overly normal to start out with, looking almost bucolic, then super crazy. And now they're showing people fighting. This is what they're fighting for, for a normal, for a more normal life. Have families. Although some may argue that dressing some other guy in your dead husband's clothes and calling him by your dead husband's name, not normal. (laughs) 
this actress is kind of cute. If she wanted to do it with me, I don't know. I think I would let it go. Yeah. Maybe with two well, eyes. The eye patch makes her pregnant. seem menacing. She wasn't heavily pregnant before. Some time has gone by. No, she was. Was she? They, they don't. They don't. They don't make a big deal of, of, of pointing it out. But yeah, she was from the very beginning. That's what modding while you do the uh, watch will do for you. Yeah. We do. Oh, come on. Wrong, wrong, wrong desktop. Trying to, trying to take a screenshot of this analytic, I suppose I'll have to do it on my other computer because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Just a humble man try, trying to get by on YouTube. And I don't, I'm not going to pretend this makes sense. They're crazy if they think they're going to make me stop or go away. <laughs> if anything, they're just going to make you double down. Yeah, right. You got time to watch a second episode? <laughs> what the hell? These bots have to do something. Yeah, I don't think I've got anything that I have to be at for the rest of the day. You know what? Maybe we marathon this shit. I really like this show, and now I've got someone here to help me break it down for me. And I've got my chat, who always helped me out with that, too. Nerd Poor Hill, exactly. Why do they keep doing this to me? He's the AMC gremlin. <laughs> Mitt Romney's father built, designed this, uh, or, or owned that car, car company. Before Jeep was owned by Chrysler. Back in the before time. There's nothing ever good inside of a super duper Mart in the Fallout universe. So what's the guy's name? Matt Barry. I love that they brought him in for the voice of the, of the Mr. Handy. So in other words, it's the voice of the person who does it in the game. I don't think so, actually. No, uh, Matt Barry. Okay. I, I don't know. I have to look it up. But is it Toast of London? He was on uh, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, The Mighty Boosh, uh, The IT Crowd. Is he, he was, also he, not? Am, am I incorrect to say that he's the voice of Boba Fett's droid in the Book of Boba Fett? No, and he's know. Toast of London. Let's see, I think he is. Uh, yeah, he's 88. Yeah, Book of Boba Fett. And Toast uh, Toast I mean, of Tinseltown. Toast of... That might be the new show. The original show is Toast of London. Okay, because he plays Stephen Toast on that one. Yeah, Stephen Toast is a washed-up uh, actor who is only able to get work in the worst play in London. It's outright oh, offensive. Everyone hates and it. And Toast of and London. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it, it's, that's the, probably the first show. Hey, they're sealing the finger back on. This is some cool feature tech. It's like, hey, you need a finger put back on? We'll fix that. Well, it's a finger. It's not her finger. No, it's somebody's finger. It's like a, is it a 3D printed finger or is it ethically sourced? Uh, I don't think it's ethically sourced if you cut it off a corpse. Why not just get one off a, gr uh, gul a gulper? <laughs> They're probably too big and manly for her hands. 
they had like three rows. They could have found the pinky row. I mean, some of them were smaller. <laughs> but yeah, okay. I love these signs too, by the way. Oh yeah. We just we all we never broke out of the 50s aesthetic, but their technology exceeds 50s tech. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a that's a good joke for all the right reasons <laughs> <laughs> like she laughs and then she's like wait a minute does that mean i'm not sexy they did but they did not <laughs> to do that this show has <laughs> stayed fun it's fun and everybody hit those like and follow buttons and tweet out that we're live. We're sharing Fallout. Yeah, clean up on aisle five. Padre, there's a there's a passing group chat. Don't ask they they underestimate people from New York. They do, Ray. Just a humble, extremely intelligent man trying to make it, but enough about me. Let's let's hear you talk about me. <laughs> Padre, if you got time, there's a pass out there in the uh, group chat. The people in the vault are kind of reacting how you'd expect people who've been through what they went through to act. It's like they're not pumped about life anymore. They've yeah, got all of their prisoners. all their daily interactions are awkward. Like everybody, no one really knows how to live. I think this is Harvey Mudd from Star Trek Discovery, but I just don't know. Um, they've got prisoners that they can't feed or give air to past a certain point. They've got to get rid of all of them, or they're no, or no one's going to make it. And I don't know. Like, I guess, honestly, just set the prisoners free. Be like, go on your way, you dicks. No, I mean, kind of like they they mentioned when that was pitched is they don't know how they got into the vault, so they don't know if they would be able to get back in. Just, you know what I mean? That's like the easy solution. I mean, oh, you, they don't, but Lucy left this vault, so someone knows well, how to get out. I mean, and plus, like they said, uh, I forget who it was. I think it was uh, the guys whose head they cut off. He said something about her vault being like this idealistic living, uh, where a meritocracy where everybody prides themselves on doing what is right. Yeah. So for 200 years, this fault has been training people to do what is right. And now they're presented with something where they don't know what is right.
I like how they kind of leaned into this horror and macabre shit here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the tone here is much more akin to what you would see in the game going into an abandoned vault that's been opened and raided for like 150 years. All right, the Cosby is still working good. I'm just checking up on things. Making sure I didn't make a mistake like last week with Star Trek Discovery, although there's a case to be made there that I actually spared people. <laughs> I wish they would bot swarm me over on um, Rumble, where there's like all of like three people watching. Oh, God, I'll take one of each, huh? This is this is a lot like the mo the movie The Road. Did you ever see that one? Paul uh, McCormick. Viggo Mortensen is the it. star. Same kind of shit. It's post-apocalyptic, and a lot of people are being kept alive just to be like cannibalized. There's different levels of cannibalism going on. And look, it's Cityocracy guy. Yeah. It's Dak. Is it Dak Shepard? Uh, no. I recognize him. He's in a name? lot of stuff, but I don't remember his, his name. It's been forever since I've seen him in something, but yeah, it's it's idiocracy guy. By the way, Toast of London is the only other Daisy Ridley acting credit. Really? She hands him a prop and goes, oh. So the line, she she's like, you're late for curtain. He's like, I'm sorry, but on my way here, I saw someone I went to acting school with dead in the street, become a homo after his production folded. He would graduated top of the class. Quite tragic to see. And then she's like, oh, and he's like, yeah, sudden dog. He shot himself. And then he goes out on stage like, Wah! screaming. And that's like <laughs> the first and only ever time we ever see Daisy Ridley in anything um, other than just to get her an acting credit. I don't know if the bed would stop that buzzsaw, but I don't know if they want to buzzsaw around their actress, so I get it. <laughs> oh, hey, clear. It, that looks like a practical plot uh, uh, prop, too, in a real yeah. set. There's a lot of... It, I, there's so much in here that I cannot decide if it's practical or not. So if it's not, what? they did an amazing job, but I have to imagine there's a decent amount of practical. We we seem to have a decent amount of practical, and I'd also say it's nice to see that uh, because the the show happens in an extension, like a pocket uh, or a hived off version of our world where many things are the same, they're able to get a different aesthetic without destroying their budget because these things do exist or can be fabricated. We know what to what we're looking for. Cyrus enjoying his time with the new Fallout. 
Well, I do think this is renewed interest in the game. This has been good for the yeah. game. Yeah, they they put them all on sale, and like the concurrent numbers on Steam have like tripled or quadrupled for most of them. Now, is Abraxo in the game? Yes. I figured. Abraxas is black magic in Spanish. I don't know if it's related. It might be because it's like a clean everything cleaning powder. I mean, almost everything in the original Fallout games have weird kind of sources to like why they would choose words or designs. And I want to welcome the 12 real people and the uh, replicants who are here. Four years, and then all these views will be lost. Lost like tears in the rain, Beard of Liberty. No, oh, no. That's why I have my beard. It catches them so they don't get away. Uh, his name is Peter Baron Brensinger, I believe, is the guy who's happily stoned. Oh, no, it's Matty Cardo Car Cardaropol. Maddie yeah, Kadarapol is he certainly Fury. plays a type. Uh he's playing Brad Pitt's character in like uh in True Romance, just kind of really? weird and uh, not quite tuned into what's going on. This is what her altruism gets her. I'm I, I gotta admit, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Hello there. This this twit is a great fucking zombie killer. And I don't think getting bit by the zombie means too much. Or does being bit by the ghoul ghoulify you? No. As far as I know, that's never been established in the games. What do you think about people saying, like, she's really plain, so that was kind of a woke element, too? I'm thinking that's nuts as well. Because she's kind of hot. And she looks like she can pull off some of this fighting. She's not... Love and Thunder ripped, but I mean. Right. I mean, I, mostly what makes hey, her character Nation, believable up, is Sorry. that she's just so innocent and doesn't know anything about this world. She just is sticking to her values that worked in the vault, but they don't work out here. Apparently and not. I, and as far as her looks, well, I, I think she looks exactly like she would expect for like somebody her age and from the 50s. Kind of a plain but pretty. What they meant is style Sydney Sweeney this way, is what oh. what people are trying to say, right? Like, what, uh, what would, I would like every movie to have Sydney Sweeney too, but it's just it's unfortunately uh, as of yet still not meant to be. Soon, soon. I mean, I've got no problem with her looks. I think she's cute. She fits the role perfectly. But I have seen the post where people are are modding the pictures, like people mod the Fallout games and give her big ass and big boobs and stuff. And it's like, okay, I get the joke because I'm, I'm a Fallout <laughs> modder myself, and I'm not proud of every mod that I've put in my games. Just really quick, can you um? Can, <laughs> I'm not proud of some of my mods. <laughs> um, take a look at this comment. What do you think? Is it comport with reality? Let's see. Fallout Four has issue one guy can't kill keeps coming up every time you want to rest. Another settlement needs your help. Dang it! You have to... Yeah, uh, that's Preston Garvey. That would be an NPC, right? Like, like, yeah, that's Preston Garvey. He's he's an unkillable are. but annoying character. You can mostly avoid him, but you have to avoid him from the very beginning. PJ was the first person to endorse this channel. So whether you're real or uh you know a replicant you know um you know in your four years here you can be a uh, part of this channel uh hit the like and follow buttons and uh follow uh orville nation as well how's that for engagement pj just gotta go after disney and paramount plus enough at some point they have to go somewhere else last time they snapped off after an hour let's see what goes on this time don't you feel popular in a weird way <laughs> I can't say I've, I've ever been on a stream with potentially 400 bots or people. <laughs> um, I was on Pop Culture Breakdown with Doomcock, so there were like 1,300 real people or 1,700. That will start your head spinning as you wait your first question, and then you start like, well, maybe they won't ask me any questions. And you just mute Damn, your mic I, and I get nervous away. when I'm on a show where like there's 30 people watching. I'm I'm small time. 
New Vegas fan, but waiting for the Portland expansion we were promised years ago, says my records officer, Mark Harkness. New Vegas is my favorite. My pe- oh, PJ. Um, it seems to me that that was an entry level for the point where the game really starts to get huge. Yeah, part of the reason that was so popular is it went no back to the deal. West Coast. PJ, I always appreciate it. So, like, why not? I've got the special document. I don't use stream elements. Super duper, Mark. I do really dig her weapon. That guns, that's the classic 10 millimeter pistol from Fallout. So it is. I mean, it's big for being just a pistol. Let's be honest. That's like a Desert Eagle plus a bunch of other junk on it. It doesn't need, but it looks great. Uh, We all know the line from Bat from Batwoman, right? It's a Desert Eagle, the most powerful gun in the world. (laughs) I think there are a few heavy, uh, big bore revolvers that might disagree. But yeah, that is another nod in the evolution of her character. Now she's carrying a lethal weapon. When pre- 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 previously she just had that uh, what's called a syringer that just kind of shoots syringes of stunning. Like, That's medicine. how we took out the overseer, her dad. Yeah. Sorry, so I thought you already had a pass, but I just sent you one in case you want to jump on. I know you're kind of busy and stuff. I love that the TV is just called Radiation King. It, it, that's the name of the TV in The Simpsons. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. Oh, oh my God. It's a Simpsons joke. And then, wow, he's watching himself. It's actually, that is the head of a Marshall amplifier. So it is vacuum tube technology, right? Tell me that's not the head of an amplifier. Yeah, you a would know better than me. Head. Oh, that is absolutely the vacuum tube head of an amplifier with a different uh, nameplate on it. That seems to be his line, huh? 
And just well, that so was the line knows, that they wanted to have him say that he didn't like because it changed his character. Right. Now he's reliving that moment. Now, now he's all about that kind of uh, nefariousness. Um, yeah. But hey, there's Matt Berry, Toast of London. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, that guy is great. I haven't watched Toast of well, London, but now I kind of want to. Well, the guy in the white uh, outfit, that's that's uh, Ray. Uh, he's a virulent homophobe who hates uh, Ray. Ray is boinking uh, the woman in the green who is uh, Ray. Per uh, Toast is boinking the woman in the green who's Ray Purchase, uh, Ray Purchase's ex-wife. And I don't know who the guy in the smoking jacket is. He's kind of new in this whole milieu hmm. of characters. But there we go. That's Toast of London. Let's see where we are with this Amazon thing. Uh, I think we've seen enough of the credits to jump to the next episode. I'm going to pause it just for a moment so that we can orient ourselves, though. The okay. next episode of Fallout is about to roll. Oh, there's some commercials, so we can let them pass by. But there we go, guys. That's uh, that's 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 Matt Berry. He's 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 got a great voice. Yeah, I think I first saw Matt Berry on uh, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, which is a real short series. I saw it on a uh, Cartoon Network when they brought it over here to the States. He's got an absolutely great speaking voice. He really does. He's great in a IT crowd. I wish he could have been allowed to be like a person character, like in Book of Boba Fett, and just be like some sort of mafia don to him, the way the robot kind of was anyway. <laughs> it would have helped that show a little bit because it, but that show didn't realize how comic it was, I suppose. No, they that, thought they were making the Shakespeare. Of I don't know how they were unaware of how bad that was. <sighs> thank you. Thank you, PJ. I will. One day there will be 441 people watching me. Maybe it's today. I don't know. All right. I'm just going to pause it for a moment so everyone can orient themselves. Uh, we're five seconds into this episode uh, five of Fallout called The Past. Uh, and uh, it's looks like we've got a place to pick up right where we left off hopefully it will although every episode seems to have contained some sort of flashback to the past um i guess what i should do is right now uh just jump onto youtube and take a look at uh the poll and see how we're doing with uh people uh voting oh, for yeah. fallout um yeah let's see how the 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 what grade they've given the episode all 441 of you out there. It's nice to see so many people. Uh, you know what? You, you think about how many people would have to fall and break their remote for MSNBC to have this kind of engagement, right? That's good. That's good. Thank you. Um, you know what? I had enough time to think of it. So, uh, listen, we got 18 votes here, which is, you know, uh, just a very small percentage of the amount of people watching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have uh, Nexus Sixes and other models, a few Cylons, and a lot of real people. We love you all. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you're as real as you think you are, and as real as I want you to be. 19 votes that jumped up kind of quick. Uh, listen, I give you 60 of your Earth seconds to complete the poll. Favorite Star Trek movie, Beard of Liberty? Oh, oh putting me on the spot up against yeah, somebody who right. really knows a lot more Star Trek than me. Uh, actually, we just had like a great uh, talk from Bird of Prey 5 who uh, opened up my show with a video about how I'm a crazy, insane, influence peddling, dangerous madman who actually knows nothing about Star Trek and people watch the show <laughs> because they're afraid of me. It was fucking great. It was fucking great. I mean, I objectively know that it, it, uh, I know it should be one of the, the original crew movies but I don't really know which one I would pick because it's been so long since I've sat down and watched them. I was mostly a next generation kid, but I can't really defend most of those films because they were the movies either not Star next Trek. The aren't good. aren't so good. Right. They're either over the top action, which doesn't feel like Star Trek or they're just right. boring and badly written. Um, um, and that's because well, the first one is so badly written uh, at the time, the fans came up with a a, a a theory that I always defend, and that is that uh, they said that Picard must be dreaming in this nexus that the rules of the movie have laid out you can't escape. The oh, movie is very clear. Like, well, think about it. The conversations, he has two conversations with Guinan, right? Whoopi Goldberg's Guinan. Um, and in the first uh, conversation, he's like, 
the Nexus, what is it? You can't go there. But like when he goes there, she's there. So you can. And she also says she's been there and come back. So you can. So that yeah. makes no sense, right? The first from the first sentence, we're talking shit. Then he's like, uh, how do you get there? Well, not in the ship. Now, how did she get there? <laughs> he's fucking <laughs> in a ship, right? And um, and and he's like, you know, she's like, Well, you can't be there and here at the same time, so don't worry about it. And then she like kind of like zones out and talks to her nexus self or whatever. Yeah, and then, except like, she can be on, there and here, yeah. Yeah, which means that like everybody who leaves is still there, which means there are infinite re-uploads of every Star Trek character who's been there. So there's infinite re-uploads of a card, infinite well, and also Kirk, Kirk died in the Nexus, but also died later on in a different timeline, according to Scotty on that episode Scotty, of Next Generation. He doesn't die in the Nexus. He dies when he emerges. His physical form seems to have gone into the Nexus and only dies. He leaves this he leaves this dimension and goes into the Nexus's dimension when the Nexus wave sweeps across him, which is how Soran wants to go back and how Soran was there. And for some reason, if you're in the Nexus for a second and you get beamed back, you're there forever. We, 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 <laughs> it makes no sense. We're not pretending we know. Could you inform me in the exchange for, say, three boxes of sugar bombs? Is that a game thing? Uh, yes, and that's a ridiculous amount. How about instead I'll give you one box of sugar bombs and a box of deviled eggs? The or the the the, the offer has been made. Uh, this is a Star Trek channel, so we'll try to use the rules of acquisition. A contract is a contract is a contract is worth what you agree to uh, pay for it. Uh, 76 has a kid's show joke and a Futurama scribble. Bite my rusty metal ass in the dome area. I, I, nice. I love Bender, my fellow Latino. Uh, do not call me Latinx. I consider that to be a uh, 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 hate speech. Uh, that do yeah. not fucking call. Yeah, you know what? When people say, oh, what, what bothers you about it? It's like, where are the white X's? Right? You're, would you be, does that make other people uh, white X? Right? You're white tax. I'm a white tax. Um, well, uh, yeah. Right? You know, I'll go with it. You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm a German X. Uh, like, get the fuck out of here. Like, we're going to assume on Latino people and only Latino people that they're naturally trans. Get, get, get the fuck I out mean, of here. If, if you call me white, white X, I'm going to assume you're asking why I'm Texan. I'm going to say because it's the best damn <laughs> state in the world. Get out. I'm glad I live in America, but Texas is cool. Um, my we adopted uh, my sister in Texas. My family, like my, oh, okay. my adopted family, were adopted. Woo, crazy shit, right? Uh, I have two fathers, but I got them the old fashioned way. I got adopted, so yeah, like, but I did meet my Uther Pendragon before he, uh, he passed away. But yeah, no, I was okay. adopted. My sister was from Texas, much taller than me, heavily Native American, and uh, you know what? Talks like Gloria Bunker with the, like the thickest New York accent. <laughs> <laughs> And she's a Texan. She loves going there. She's like she's got Texas in her blood, I guess. Steam might be the place to go for it. A lot of people probably using it on Steam. We saw a lot of people uh, signed up for it. I'm guessing that everyone's gone back to this game, and I'm guessing that it has a. Uh, I'm guessing. I'm guessing the following is only going to increase. Uh, there will yeah. be no Starfield show. Uh, so. I guess with that, uh, let me grab my writing implement, which uh, I, I, you know what? I, I do a good job of pretending no, I know how to write. So uh, we are 124 when episode two is about to roll. Episode, uh, I'm sorry, episode five. We are season one, episode five. We're fast to peach. We've passed the halfway point. I'm ready to say that 50% of this show is like 75 to 85% real good. Like yeah. it's not like in the eighties, we would have disregarded it as average, but this is real, real good for now. This might be a yeah. 10 for now, for now, but that's, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of picky on how I rate things. So if I, like, if I give something an eight, that's like most people giving it a nine or something like that. So, uh, I'm giving this it a is seven not a and spoiling and a half, for the uh, rest of the series, but for this series it, overall, I would give it a seven, five to an eight. I come from a world where I saw they live in movie theaters, right? So here we go. Uh, this episode is 45 minutes and 20 seconds long. I'm starting at the five second mark. So there's 45 minutes and 15 seconds long. You can see the Prime logo on screen. If you're watching on Cosme, this won't be a problem, but my prompt will be a, lot, a little out of time. Those of you watching at home later, those likes, uh, they count too, especially to make up for the bot army. Uh, I don't want to have to uh, private another stream. They just took away all my views, real or not, for the last week. Uh, so hopefully, uh, give me some likes, something to hold on to here, because, hey, this is what they do when you speak out. I can clearly see here 
But my message is getting through. The First Amendment's a fucking beautiful thing. All right, at 1.25.41 into the live stream, here we go. Uh, lights, camera, and action on episode five of Fallout. Come on, roll. Here we go. It's rolling now. You can see the Fallout logo. Oh, you can skip the recap. You just watch it. We're at, I am paused at one minute and eight seconds. So I guess we've skipped the recap. So three, two, one, action. And we're seeing the Amazon MGM Studios. These episodes are very consumable. They're nowhere near as boring, long, super stupid Star Trek. A uh, new Trek. Sorry, new Trek. Star right. Trek is great. Yeah, the, the scenes don't overstay their welcome. They switch characters just when you need to get a different tone. And they have not lost track of any characters, although I didn't mind that we didn't see this guy last episode. Right. I, I, don't, I didn't miss this guy. We get it. He doesn't need the kind of development other people need. He's not really on a journey. This is the culmination of where he's supposed to be anyway. Or just he hasn't actually Knight started his journey. Uh, honestly, the concerning thing here is he shortcut his journey. He's got the ultimate goal, the suit, doesn't he? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a little Kylo Ren-esque. Like, I, I, there's a few things about this character that are, they're a little, they're a little bit worrisome, but none as bad as the fact the actor can't act. Yeah. The character cooler than the actor. Is this guy not? Is it, and he, he brands Titus's name on this guy. I just point out that's not your initial. Or, or maybe he's branding him with a T for Admiral Teague. That's that's what it is. That's, that's what that's it absolutely is. what it is. That's what it is. So he see like dispensed from like loser central to be the squire for this guy. Um. I don't know. I, I think all the, the squires in, in general just kind of played off as useless ideologues. They're just kind of like the goofballs of the, the military. So we got the final results for episode one, by the way. We got 20 votes, which is great. So leaving people some extra time to vote helped. I gave you guys more time than I said I would, so I didn't really need to reannounce it. That's been holding up the end of polls. So this is what happened. What grade do you give Fallout Episode 4? A, 44%. B, 40%. So 84% of everybody thought this was very high quality or high quality entertainment uh, with a slight edge towards very high quality. Uh, C, 10%. And F, 5%. 20 people voted. So that messes up. That would mean that like uh, adjusted for the amounts of bots watching, that would mean that 340,000 people gave it an A. <laughs> uh, 475,000 people gave it a B, but uh, B got slightly less percentage than A. And then C, 10%, DF, 5%. I'm surprised some people thought it was a DF. People were just not backing off the woke thing. What do you think? I don't of know. DF? The, 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 is that a fun the, trolling vote? Are people just having fun, or is that like what would be the opinion? Mr. Mr. There's been kind of a split on the first half of the season on whether it's not it's really good and the second half is bad or the first half is good and the second half is bad. It, the discussion for this show is all over the place. Um, People are having time to now heavily analyze it. All we know is that it didn't, didn't have a whole lot of woke. If there was woke in here, it wasn't to a, a really insane amount. Right. They did seem... I think you and I, you're the first person I had on here. I guess so. You're, you're not the first person on here, but people on here have agreed and disagreed with me about whether or not the show salutes the wokeness. Doesn't seem to do it that time unless you want to just say our heroine is badass, but I don't mind looking at her. I just wish that she would wear something a little more like form fitting. <laughs> The bots don't mind. Are the real people up to 101 real people now? I guess, like, hopefully they'll let me keep that. The the view count and the concurrent viewers don't match, which means something sauce. 
please, YouTube, let me keep the real count this time. That was not cool that I lost out on all that last time. You're not paranoid if they're out to get you, are you, Beard? No, it's only paranoia if you're wrong. Wouldn't this be a strong sign that someone is pretty fucking pissed at me? <laughs> Somebody's got your name written on their wall several times. And this is not an economical form of harassment of a channel. This took some money. These are hundreds and hundreds of bots. Or yeah. a lot of people who just like to be entertained by the greatest of entertainers and his beard. <laughs> Everybody knows <laughs> I have a beard now. My secret's out, beard. Uh, what am I going to do? Let me try something here. Here we go. This looks better. Watch this now. Boom, I'm facing you and it looks more concise. <laughs> Uh, oh, and my my screen's this way, so it kind of looks like we're talking to each other. Yeah. Keep keep your hand there to cover the weapon that YouTube certainly. Uh, look how they're <laughs> suppressing me for the weapon. No one's watching because of that. Oh wow! Oh, four twenty. <laughs> That's a good amount. I like having four hundred and twenty libraries. Oh, another exploding head. Man, that would be my this... nightmare to be trapped in that armor, claustrophobia, and being stuck there. No, thank you. Apparently, you pee the armor too. We're holding incredibly steady with no one going into the theater. Guys, if you want to go into the theater. Hi, Snail! Snail, um, use your pass if you want. Jump in here with us, bro. I have to go update my statistics to say, um, update my uh, show description to say episodes uh, four and five. That's that's why we became YouTubers, right? So we could be truly free and entertain the people <laughs> and artificial life forms of the internet. I don't know about anybody else, but I became one because somebody said, hey, you should guest on my show. And I said, why? And they said, because. And I said, yes. And it's never stopped. Would that person be Roman? <laughs> no, that person would be my buddy R2 the Icky. Throw his link in the chat and say hi to everyone so I can wrench you up. You've been a host, a co-host now. You deserve a wrench and you need to be able to promote stuff. I'm pretty sure you gave me a wrench already for some reason. <laughs> All right. Well, then please promote your friends so that other, so our community can grow. And so other people, well, I guess, like, hopefully not be bots warmed, but, you know, our community can grow. There are about 12 to 20 real people here. Aaron Moulton, Moulton Maximus is just not a great actor. This is all about the search for head. So it's like high school for me all over again. <laughs> <laughs> if I only had a brain. All right. I'll post this link. This is uh, my buddy's channel. It's also the one that I'm now a co-host on. So it's Throw it right in the after regular the chat. weekend. Make sure you put the name of his uh, channel on there so people know what they're, they're clicking on. And they don't think we're giving them an Xbox. And just throw it right in there. <laughs> well, we're not giving anyone an Xbox. Although, if my Xbox were to break, I would raffle off the piece or give away the piece as a Teague memorabilia. You can buy my hair clippings or my fingernail clippings. No, I'm just kidding. Although, I don't know. You people, promise? Make me an offer. Yeah, make me an <laughs> offer. Do I promise I'm kidding? Yes, I promise I'm kidding. There we go. Yeah, it's after the weekend. We do movie There reviews. we go. Yeah, so I don't know if it was made clear, but when his squire found out who he was and freaked out, he stole his fusion core, which powers the suit. So he, he can't move without that. That wasn't super clear. So wait, the guy he branded, like, 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 the guy he branded, like, Zack Snyder Batman, is now wise to this bullshit. And he took off. On yeah, he actually, because okay. Maximus was kind of like feeling like a, like, so a little bit of camaraderie. So he revealed who he was. And uh, so then his squire stole the head, stole Maximus' his fusing core, and ran off. Uh, but not before getting his foot stepped on by a two-ton suit of armor. Oh, geez. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, here, um, Maximus uh, lying, they, like, backfilled that story hole, like, why he would lie about who he was. But it's not the greatest backfill, is it? Not something we would want no. to celebrate. Um, that should have been beforehand. Mm -hmm. something because we're not showing him as deceitful till like i mean i guess they did make it clear 
I can see why people call this uneven. And we're like two or three episodes into a different directing team. And I don't know if the original director comes back for the last episode. But that seems to be how we do it these days, doesn't it? Yeah, unfortunately. Hey, all right. It looks like we have another member of my crew who's going to join us for a moment. Let me just uh, beam him directly to the bridge. Hello, Snail Messiah. A.K.A. the Mighty Snail. Do you know Beard of Liberty? Greetings. Hello. Well, hello there. Um, and no, I think this is the first meeting for me and Snail. And Snail. Here, I need to find out. Here we go. Let's, let's change this layout a little bit. There we go. Audio. Yeah, you, I can hear you, by the way. All right. So, by the way, good use of the volume. Their their dome basically is the volume. They project like happy pictures on the wall to keep you from going insane. It reminds me a little bit of Downsizing, the movie Downsizing. Okay. They've replicated the real world on a miniature level so they feel like they fit in. But like whatever he has like one huge bottle of vodka. He has one regular sized bottle of vodka in his backyard. And he's just it's gonna take him like the rest of his life to drink it. There. Although he makes a dent in it because he's very miserable quick. Hey, we were able to hear <laughs> you. Welcome. Uh, do you see the Cosme link? It's in the chat. I am uh, watching the Cosme link as we speak. Oh, cool. I'm going to check on our pal like and see if they still have a chat. Look, do you see how many live people we have watching? Live quotes we, people we have watching? No, I don't. Oh, take a look at the live counts on YouTube. And tell me what you think of that. Dear. <laughs> Well, either you have become very popular or some butts are out there. The last time all views went away, including the lo – what happens is there's a there's an actual view count on my analytic that's like about 105 people that I believe in. And then there's this, which is horseshit. I believe that 105 people have been through my stream. Oh, gosh. Some of the things they sell on Rumble, this – fucking trump terminator doll i mean i don't know take it away. oh my god <laughs> is it funny kind of is it 40 dollars worth of funny I, you know only you decide I don't so you all know dips and lucy i saw her first <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong, Lucy. People said she's too plain, but I find her cute. And I don't know where they're supposed to be, but that looks a lot like New York with the elevated subway. Or Chicago. Plain? Look at those eyes. Imagine those looking up at you. I mean, what's not to love? <laughs> no, well, I would yeah. want her to be looking like up across her forehead at me while she was like... Drinking a beer? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, drinking a beer. Drinking, drinking a beer. A, a very natural beer. I'm, oh, I'm God, sure some of the good. source material is beer. By the way, uh, I have one complaint about the show, and only one so far. You ready? Yep. I don't think this motherfucker Maximus can act for shit. He at least he's not a thin. Yeah, radioactive. That's why, like, last time I emailed you to see, so you could take part in it, but this is, there's like 15 people watching. Um, it doesn't, it, it doesn't seem worth it, you know. Um, if you want in, though, by all means, just let me know. Battle him of the Republic. Have you noticed how impassive he is, though? If I'm not going to let Katie Sackhoff get away with it in Mandalorian 3, I can't let this guy get away with it. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Yeah, I'm still torn on whether it's he was directed to act incredibly bland or if the actor is just incredibly bland. I still don't know what it is. No it's one else one in of the those. show is incredibly bland. Uh, but I think it might have been a directive choice. I think it might have been a directive got, choice. But, but everyone has range but him. Yeah, um, I know. I, I think it's a weird character trait that they're trying to portray, but they're failing at. I agree. Okay. All right. He, he's from the Brotherhood of Steel. So he, he's uh, he's trying to pull off 
military stoic and trying That's to find it. his way. Yeah, he's trying to be stoic, but he just kind of comes off as bland and weak. In times of crisis, the overseer comes. I mean, their aesthetic is amazing. Also, that water crisis is a nice nod to the first Fallout game. Where your entire goal is to go get a water chip. I was well, I thought it was unlikely. Right I thought I thought it was unlikely to have this high of a live count, live watch count before. But I'm like, maybe I did a great job of tagging, and I just went to add the new tags, and I'm like, wow, I didn't tag it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the secret. I've been trying too hard. At least Rumble still has absolutely no one watching as per usual. <laughs> Just I thought so about pulling it up to add, add some watching time over there, but I don't know if about doing three streams at once on my my, my system. No, no, don't crash your computer. Uh, you, not that Rumble will either work or it doesn't. They're not great with engagement, and also, as far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to be playing my show. It seems to just be stuck on the screensaver for the show, doing everything I can to activate it. It's showing well, me one dumb and, commercial. And after. It oh, here briefly. it is. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, yeah, it is on. That area that they're walking right now, it looks a lot like um, Fallout 4. Uh, I can't remember what the train station is called. But yeah, it does. Train station. And behind there, you have a water purification facility. It looks like that place. Oh, that, that is that the, the place where the super mutants are? Exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Now, now, um, there's actually, if I click a link on Rumble, there's a little bit of an analytic that tells me how long people have been watching for. And that tells me that one of the two people watching is probably me. But wow, Rumble woke up. Hey, the M5 is out there. Hey, what's going on, M5? Anyone says that she just meh, she's very pretty. I don't know what, what people are expecting. I don't know. I mean, is she Demi Moore? No, but is she good looking? Hell yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess they wanted an absolute knockout, but like, where's your male lead absolute knockout? I did the average world, average people. They're not, they didn't ugly her up like Sydney Sweeney in Madam Web. There's nothing nefarious going on here that I can think of. Yeah. Here's what I see. I see them having the character creator on random. It's like one of the presets. Yeah. It's for uh, citizens in your, in your game. And, and they are as varied in, in this scene as they are in the game, pretty much. And some of yeah. it to a comic uh, extent. So some folks have a little bit of a problem with her brother getting into all the computers here, but they've already established that he is good at computers. He's just discovered that basically every overseer that they've ever had has come from Vault 31. She looks like uh, Nichelle Nichols. Nichols. I thought that so many times too. Yeah. So I, I uh, that that makes me like her more. <laughs> yeah. Wait, who looks like Nichelle Nichols? Leslie Elbow was here. Oh, was here. I guess. I mean, in Star Trek Six. I mean, yeah. Later on. She's older than we ever saw Nichelle in the movies, but uh, okay. Yeah. And Nichelle stayed really thin all her life. She's like really, really, was really, really naturally thin. Mm. 
This I looks just, a lot like a bridge we saw in an episode of The Boys. This looks very much like a, 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 that that area where some super people live in that season two episode of The Boys, where he sees his wife. Uh, what do we have here? This is a very video game-like interaction. Look how unreadable uh, Titus is, uh, Maximus is, though. Like, she's got emotions. I'm trying to figure if it fits in with what you're saying. See, she's learning. I like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you were in here when I said it earlier, Snail, but somebody on Monday pointed out that Titus is, or, or Maximus is basically a luck build, an idiot <laughs> savant. <laughs> Like he doesn't really know what he's doing, but he succeeds sometimes. I like how, by the way, our, it looks like our heads are on the bodies of the Max a little bit <laughs> on, on our screen. I lean over for a little the bit. Brotherhood of Steel. There we go. Yeah, and she's obviously a charisma build. She's not great at it, but she's trying. Charisma and intelligence. Oh, yeah. I, oh, actually, no, yes, like, you're right. Intelligence first, then charisma. She has no wisdom. Um, Absolutely no wisdom. No, <laughs> she no. has a look. No, none. <laughs> she has a very, very popular look for right now is the only way to say it. It's a very 2024 look for, like, someone who would be, like, even, even like, a like selling, like, cosmetics or something. You know what I mean? Or endorsing a phone company. She's got a very 2024 look. It's the only way to put it. Her in that white tank top, that's all the lingerie she needs for me. I just Who's realized been, what she, who she reminds her me spouse of. spouse abuser. <laughs> and she's got Who's bigger eyes than of? Jenna Coleman, but she reminds me of Jenna Coleman from the, the later seasons of Doctor Who before it went bad and we pretend those seasons don't exist. <laughs> or a dark-haired version of um, Amanda Seyfried. Okay. Her eyes are really big. Okay, yeah. I like how we give song credit in the subtitles. Herb Albert <laughs> deserves it, right? I don't know if it's really intentional, but it's focused in on her gray finger that was reattached recently, and the song is called Lady Fingers. It's, you know what? Um, home run right there, actually. I'm pretty sure that that's not the first time that something like that's happened, and I love it every time it works out. Oh, that was a bad makeup joke. So bad. Uh, the uh, that oh the the quote unquote druggy eyes. Yeah, and really she knows that these makeup. people are evolved. Oh God, she's Gollum. Um, I go. think you know what I've seen. I've seen her on Tinder. <laughs> How did he miss my feet when he got the first shot off? Okay, at least he shot someone. He shot him. Oh, he's a good shot. Oh, I didn't realize he hit her. He used bats. <laughs> oh, I love that 10 millimeter. It is so beautiful. She I don't care about cute. guns, but that gun is beautiful. I'm now partial to the older cute. version. I'm gonna i I'm gonna start fighting, pushing back and fighting <laughs> back against people who say she's not cute enough. She's very cute. I, I I'll keep saying that until everybody agrees with me. <laughs> I just want her to have a uh, more uh, uh, revealing outfit. She's British, Jacob Ironside says. Is she? And she is. She's doing a great job not sounding like it. A lot yeah, of people no, even, you can hear it bleed through. Or explodes through, whatever the case might be. <laughs> it's fun that, that uh, British act, actors and actresses, they can pull off a reasonable American accent. But the other way oh. around, no. no. <laughs> I'm going to ask my Halo guys. So I'm going to read Jacob's uh, chat, and then you guys give him an answer. Chief in the video games, so we're, we're, we're mixing our metaphors here, but Chief in the video games didn't have any emotions. I kind of get what they were trying to do with Maximus, but it didn't pay off. Is yeah. he maybe onto something here? 
Go ahead. I, I just got. I did, oh, uh, I, I didn't play the Halo games. I just bought them. They were on sale on Steam. The whole uh, Halo series, and I think remastered as, remastered as well. I just bought that, so I'm getting into that. But oh, be having no emotions. A lot of people get that wrong, like with the uh, Vulcans. Well, that's suppressed emotion, and uh, Kung Fu, whatever this and that. A lot of people get that wrong. So I'm not too fussy about Maximus not really paying off. Yeah, I agreed. I, I typed it in there. I agree with Jacob. Uh, in the in the Halo games, you can he may not express emotion, but the emotion is felt sometimes in what is not said with Master mm -hmm. Chief and other characters, um, and that's just failing at least so far with Maximus. Like I said, I don't, still don't know if it's through directing or acting ability, but it's definitely to blame one of those. Maybe both. Well, it all comes down to direction because the director has to see this is not working. Yeah, but right. this guy's coming off like Master Chef more than Master Chief. I mean, it's just that ex <laughs> inexpressive. Yeah. Well, Master Bader, really. <laughs> that's that's uh, what he comes off as. Well, <laughs> comes off as. <laughs> By the way, I love living in New York. You know what I did today? I had to do this shit for work. I went and bought. Uh, the, the, I went to. The, I went. I got a suit. I had to do it. I had no choice. And then, um, in less than uh, twenty minutes, I walked down the street, bought a love seat because I needed one. My apartment, my couch, like fell apart. I've been sitting in this goddamn gamer chair for like a week, and now I have a love seat in my apartment. I was able to buy it in like twenty minutes. The guy's like. You like his floor sample I have in your house in half hour. It it beat me home. The guy was like waiting for me. With <laughs> wow. My, with my new couch. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll take care of it. And they just like skinned off like the packing material, left not one a bit of uh, anything and just split. I was like, uh, you've earned this deuce, my man. <laughs> I like you still chippy. And it's then, not uh, working, but the show. The, here's the thing: the character's okay. It's just maybe the actor's got more in him, but he's not being allowed to deliver much more than what we see. That yeah, brother right there. I like him. He he really looks like a character creator gone wrong. I love it. He is perfect for this show. He uh, does kind of uh, have the Bethesda face shape and ears. Uh, like from Oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, a poor guy. I, I love him in this role, but yeah. I, I made Gordon Ramsay mad is what he's is is Mark Harkness's uh it's gonna call you a donut. Thing. You'll never recover from that. I love the one where he went to his restaurant and tested all the surfaces in the bathrooms that the employees used for cocaine and everything came back positive. And I'm like, well, you own a restaurant. <laughs> you have no absolutely you have absolutely no right to be surprised about this, you fucking asshole. <laughs> I know a guy who was a chef a for a while. He says, my life. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Come on. Fuck off. I'm absolutely mortified and shot. No, Gordon, you're also pretty goddamn wired. I think some of it was you. Allegedly. What I wonder is how much uh, Colombian sugar did Gordon Ramsay use in his day? Oh, I think he put, put I, it's my opinion that. Uh, if he doesn't drink a lot of Red Bull now, he is uh, absolutely using a lot of that. And your mic is super hot, so I'm turning you down. Oh, well, let me just fix that. I can fix it on my I got you. I got you. You're fixed. Okay. You all, you all I'm fixed. fixed. Oh, no. <laughs> not, you're not neutered. You're fixed. I just oh, okay. I set you to my volume, about the same volume I am. And I never checked Beard, but he seems to be copacetic with me. Let's see. Do, Testing do, do. one, two, three. Yeah, you're a little high. I'm gonna bring you down just a bit. I keep my okay. setting low because I just have a loud voice. Like I'm nerfing my uh, volume in two different ways. But look at the size of my uh, my my <laughs> bubble around my avatar is popping, which is the indication of how loud you are. Now, oh, yeah, and my setup's janky too, so I never know how I'm, I come through. Um, I don't think it was a problem. Um. That that's one thing we need in, in StreamYards and all these uh broadcasts. 
Volume even uh, something that evens out the volume in a way that's equitable and makes sense instead of stepping on and fucking people over here and there. Yep. Because the volume, See. the volume equalization is why some of us lose signal and get stepped on. What's going on? The Borg took this city. Well, that's this this is this is uh, Shady Sands. This was where the NCR, the New Car Ca California Republic, set up one of their main cities. Um. It was a central hub in the first Fallout game, but some they have three different between... kinds of bathrooms there in this camp. In the <laughs> this was before that was a thing. Uh, okay. Uh, well, California. At some point between the games and now, somebody blew up Shady Sands and kind of wiped the NCR out of this area. Good, good. There, or is that there's good or is that there's bad? still remnants of them. Actually, they're one of the more stabilizing forces in the Fallout games, although they're spread too thin so they can't really keep things under control. Okay. So they're, they're, not, as, they're not as corrupt as like the brotherhood or vault tech or any of the other factions, but they're like well-meaning just in kind of incapable. So he didn't survive the blast in that. He lives in that, huh? I don't know. Oh, that that might be a nod to Indiana Jones. Back to his, well, that's why you be. have the super cools in the crater. But why nod to that Indiana Jones movie? Oh, but yeah, apparently he was at Shady Sands and was rescued by the Brotherhood. That's part of the reason that he holds knights in such high regard because it's like it's like if Superman were to come down and rescue you, it's like, oh man, I want to oh, be yeah, that. The one live day. count is normal again. It's over. I hope you enjoyed your bot the thing. While you had it. it lasted <laughs> from six forty to set to eight twenty. Well, today is uh, four twenty. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, come for the show. Stay for the bot swarm. Thank God it's normalized, and thank you to the hundred seventeen real people who came here. Some fucking bullshit. Can you guys tweet out that the stream is real? I feel like no one's watching now after that. And if anyone has any doubt that this was anything but fake, and or or wants to say that I'm saying it's real, look at that that sauce as fuck. Look at the shape of that analytic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. one big block. I mean, well, they couldn't even be nice and get you up to at least 500 bots. I mean, <laughs> we're just teasing it you. It didn't slope back down to a normal number. I don't know why, but that vault tech logo, I love it. Oh, it's it, classic. It's, Very simple. It's so simple. So now I'm going to put your head. I'm putting all of our heads over the max. Here we go. <laughs> How's that, guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we look great. <laughs> Let me find a, a head. Oh, this is not good. I'm getting too obsessed with her. Uh... Let's see here. We're all getting to know this world pretty well. I've there. progressed through most of it in about 10 days. So they gone power slower than most people. I like to savor this sh show and enjoy it. It's been fun every week. Um, I do think this guy is, I, mean, I am starting to wonder if this guy's just a bad actor. And they're just like, you know, just go toss a turn. That's all you can do. Cause he's sort of smirking his way through everything. Like, Oh, he opened his mouth there. Was that surprised? So I, I love that people who have not played the games have been able to enjoy this series. But there's so many little things, like the fact that this was a Vault Tech building they walked into, and there's nothing good comes from Vault Tech. And right there, he yeah. finds Well, there out. we go, dropping through. We, we had the get smart moment where he falls through the floor. And I might power wash the inside of my vault if it was covered with blood like that. A little demoralizing. People in this vault are doing good on the corn. Is that that is that actor? Is that the guy? Isn't he in the show You? Right? Isn't that Zach Cherry, the the large black guy with the uh, the portly black guy with the beard and the glasses? Hmm. I think it is. Yeah, it's Zach Cherry. Yeah. He's in a show called You. It was big before COVID.
I mean, it does make sense that you wouldn't abandon this place. Yeah. I mean, you also did, did just lose like a whole bunch of your population, so it also seems weird to split them off quite so early. You know what I don't understand? Why Bethesda never released a Nuka-Cola? I never understood that. They would I have made they, so much money. Didn't they release a limited edition Nuka Dark, but it wasn't actually alcoholic like it is in the game? That's it why it's like that. alcoholic. And it, they don't and want they to pay license. No one has the bottle. licensing fee. Yeah. I mean, I just... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say there's so many states you couldn't ship that into anyway. Well, it's just make a cola. I just uh, bought... They have this Mexican week at the supermarket. And they got a Mexican cola. Uh, let's see here. What's it called? Uh, Jarritos? Oh, Jarritos? Jarritos, yeah. That cola is amazing. They could have put that in the bottle. It would taste great, and I would be addicted. What the hell? Yeah, so if only Vault 31 and 33 are still standing, who came in here to clean up Vault 32? Well, wasn't that uh, the Raiders? Oh, they, there were dead bodies and blood in here last time this, this character was in here. Yeah, this place and was now, fucked up, and there, there was a putrefied body. Or was that was he tripping a little? Because. Dun, dun, dun. Only one other person knows that he saw bodies that had been dead for a long period of time. The the Raiders destroyed so much, and I'm thinking somewhere out there there's someone who's like, yeah, like that 10 grand I put on them to win the playoff game. I feel like your story is really slowing down. I'm not saying it's bad or I hate it, but it's slower now. Hmm. Yeah, this is another side effect, I think, of having so many different writers and directors. If he wakes up right now, I will hate this show. (laughs) He's really bad at sleeping. Um, I'm not convinced he's asleep. I just don't like in shows when they all wake up at the same time. Oh, we have to wake up. Uh, I don't like it. Yeah. I liked it in um in Aliens. But I guess it wouldn't have made sense if they were if like the capsules open and some of them didn't wake up. By the way, not such a warrior that you can't walk around him while he's asleep, huh? The traits don't match the portrayal. I'm going to blame the actor. I'm sorry. It was a bridge too far for this guy's ability. I mean, she's not Zooey Deschanel, but she's all right. Yeah. I would right. be stoked if I had a girlfriend that that pretty. I'm down like three hundred and like ninety uh four hundred and thirty six watchers, but I'm in the mood for another episode. You guys got time? Yeah, absolutely. Can we go one more. Yeah, All right, let me just write more. down some time codes here. Well, let me um, say, uh, I I made some pancakes and I ooh, cooked them in pig lard. them over here. Ooh, I want some. It's good. I don't do this very often, maybe once every two or three years, because it, it tastes Hi, really good. Tina the Naughty Dragon. Ooh, hey, Tina. Welcome. It's nice to see you here. 
encountered you at Dadman's. Um, we have moved our heads around so that we're all over the the max from the Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, it's it's gonna. Ha- I'll have to fix it later. I'm gonna like next time I use this layout, I can be like, "What the fuck happened?" But um, <laughs> thank you all for coming to this uh, ep- this uh, episode of Saving Star Trek, where we save Star Trek by watching fa- uh, Fallout. And uh, here's what you missed. All the best fake people were here. We had a bot swarm. It, we're gonna, I, it's now the Saturday bot swarm. I guess that's the only time Paramount can afford to exact vengeance on Admiral Teague. Okay, I'm going to pause this right here for a moment. So where are we? At 2.06 in my live stream as I write down the time code. Okay, at 2.06. Uh, so at the two-hour at, at the two-hour mark, plus or minus... The uh, episode five ends, and we're going to go forward into episode six. Wow. Um, hey, and if you, know you want to get people in here, you can advertise out that I'm pretty sure this episode we get to see boobs. Oops, you, you say? know what? Uh, yeah, I'm going to tweet <laughs> that out. Uh, I've been told boobs are on the way. I'm but, pretty uh, sure it's this yeah, next the, one. Okay. Uh, the, I've been told this is the boobs episode. Uh, I'm going to go with that. Um, it's what, you, it's what you're going to title your chapter, isn't it? Ooh, the the one person who joins and quits and joins and quits, quits. That was always the prelude to the bot attack. So yeah, all all signs of the bot attack are complete. That one person, jo- one person joins, then the bot attack happens. Then after the bot attack ends, someone quits in midstream. So if you're here for the first time, join uh, to make up for, for that person. No problem. We'll hold off for a minute. Um, this one has boobs. Um, I don't know. Have you seen this one yet, Snell? No, I have not. Um, well, the episode four and f- four watch party grew into the episode five watch party, and now it's going to turn into the episode six watch party. I couldn't be more pleased. Uh, you know what? Um, pretty good show. Uh, I do see why there's an argument about like how maybe the first half of the show and the second half of the show are a little different. Uh, not totally the same in character. I do think the two, the changing directors probably has to do has, has something to do with. It. I don't know. Thoughts on that one? No do thoughts. You, do you? No thoughts. Okay. Well. We'll give it a minute for Beard to get back. Uh, Let's see how the voting went. And then uh, for the next episode, what we'll do is we'll change the poll to can Maximus act? Can can Maximus act in us? And I don't know. Uh, His activism, his acting is like he got the job. Like, I don't know. Like his father owns a company. He's like, he's really stoic. Uh, like, I guess Ray Fisher's career is over. They couldn't hire him from uh, Justice League. Hmm. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, there, there could have been uh, that this guy really, he's not the best or the worst, uh, but he's a little carved out of wood. Um, I don't know what to say. Uh, it's not the greatest show. I can, I'm, I'm sure of that. Uh, Compared to the last episode was not as good as episodes one, two, and three. That last episode, it wasn't bad, but I guess at some point, like we just have to proceed through this world and go places. I liked the sets and the environments are still really good, but uh, we didn't, we didn't do a lot in that episode. That episode just, it was inoffensive, but it sort of existed, didn't it? Yeah. I agree. All right, Beard, you're back. Cool. Yeah, sorry. All right. Heard a noise. Had to go check. No problem. Uh, no problem. Uh, just uh, remember, all firearms need to be clean 24 hours after being fired. Um. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> not them saying that I need to clean any now, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Hold on a second. There's there's some people out in the street making noise. Hey, hey, shut up. <laughs> yeah, you're next. All right. Up yours. All right, sorry, let me just close the window. All right, yeah, you know, I, I never know what's going to happen here. So, guys, what will happen in the next episode? We'll find out. We're about to find out. All right, guys, I'm engaging the viewer. 
And uh, this episode uh, is one hour long. Uh, obviously, some kind of important moment here. It's a little longer than the other ones by just a, little, a bit. Uh, uh, let me take it back to zero, zero, zero. Uh, we're at all zeros across the board here. The screen is completely black. Uh, and uh, if you're watching at home, I'm starting on action. Uh, lights, camera, and action. And again, of course, it took a second to really kick in. The Prime logo is on screen. We're at five seconds now. Tina says someone must be from New York. <laughs> I am, in fact, from New York. I uh, sometimes sound like uh, Bugs Bunny when I talk. Nothing I can do about it. <laughs> so I get angry. It starts to get kind of, kind of Daffy Duck-esque. Oh, we've seen this. Before. Okay, yeah, this is the catch up. Cool. Yeah. Here he is in a more familiar guy. This is how we remember the actor. It's the Twilight Zone. You think their cigarettes are like safe and fine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. They got nuclear filters or something like that. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> This is like Star Trek up the long ladder. Like we we have a community of only scientists, and like do we have another community of people who only do manual labor? And these yeah, guys very... pull some dick dick stuff too. I think. Oh, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was gonna say that's very vault tech. There's a certain number of control vaults where there was no experiment, but a lot of them like they would set up a vault with only scientists, or there was one vault where they had one guy that they just cloned over and over and over again. In almost oh, every God. vault, except for a handful, where it was actually an experiment performed on the people who, who lived in it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the overseer didn't even know about it. They thought they knew, but then there would be a secondary experiment performed on the overseer. So vault tech is all, all levels of nefarious. In Fallout 4, you have uh, one They're... vault where uh, people are being watched from behind the walls. You have scientists, mm -hmm. you know, doing all, and that's where you find one of your companions. But uh, that's one of the things they do. I don't know what's so great about Alaska. 
Okay. I, I mean, if you live there, it like was, more power to you, but it looks like a tough place to survive. In this universe, it was one of the last places on Earth that had petroleum. In our world, so, it's one of the last places well, on yes. Earth that has petroleum. But that's what kind of led up to going full nuclear was a basically world war over oil reserves. Oh, okay. I just uh, broke an AI again. Nice. We need people with those skills. <laughs> well, one time I was sitting down with a friend and we were trying to make prompts that will make it do things it normally wouldn't. And it, it took a while for it to, I think, it catch on. That is what we're doing. And then everything just stopped working for like a day or something. For his computer, anyways. It gave these funny error messages that it didn't understand. And right now, I got one that where I misinterpreted what you wrote. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen any results. I'd like to live at that house. Did Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright design that shit? <laughs> it's very Frank Lloyd, right? Hmm. And welcome everybody. Hit those like and follow buttons if you're here for the first time and tweet out that the stream is live. This is the episode with boobs. Yay! You know, the mob is going to come after me if I'm wrong about that. And rightfully so. We will turn you out <laughs> of the vault. If it's not this one, it's the next one, but I'm pretty sure it's this one. Uh, you're committed until we see that balls. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> well, I have a camera. Don't, don't tip me. Don't. Uh, I'm not saying nothing. I want to see Lucy's boobs. Told you. I call dibs. She's mine. This is the guy. I love that guy. He was on uh, the IT crowd and yeah. what we do in the shadows. So that's where yeah. I know him from. Yeah, we were gushing about Matt Berry earlier. I would wish they would use one of those uh, prefab houses they used in Fallout 4. Just yeah. larger. That would be nice. Yeah, working with actual real buildings and structures, you kind of lose the uh, Fallout aesthetic. But yeah. for the most part, it's close enough. I don't mind. Oh, yeah, but still, it, it would have been neat. That's Matt Berry. Yep. That's Toast of London. Yeah, I told Snail we were gushing about him earlier. I dip my bits in the same gravy train. That's great. It's like I got 200,000. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's the voice of a robot in this too. Yeah. Yeah, he was an actor that was paid to be the, the voice of the Mr. Handy. 
that's like the woman who who like sourced the like whatever Siri or something has to deal with that. Yeah. All computer voices should be based on Major Barrett. Ah, uh, yeah. You having problems with your Wi-Fi, Naughty Dragon? I'm sorry. Check out the show on the Cosme and enjoy our commentary. As people explain to me what the hell's going on. So this is now we've gone 217 years in the future from this. Right. We're 26, 226 years in the future, because I think 2096 and the bombs fell in it's 2296 yeah. and the bombs fell in 2077. These characters look familiar. Have we seen them in the game? Is this a faction in the game or something? No. No. It's just a lot like The Walking Dead. I mean, they might be a nod to some of the uh, NCR Ranger stylings from Fallout New Vegas, but since NCR did, has kind of been obliterated in this area, they might just be a remnant that's kind of made their own faction. And guys, thanks for coming by to watch. Anybody who could watch on two devices, you help me out. But if you can't, like, you're cool too. It's fine. <laughs> I don't get why him being a vault doctor increases the veracity of his medical advice. I mean, he's just he's, he's as well trained as you could be. Hey, Jedi Bill. We'll be reviewing this with Jedi Bill later. We've been more watching it. And we've been keeping keeping our commentary to like, it's enjoyable. We haven't really <laughs> rated it. We found a, a logic hole or two here and there, but nothing terrible. Oh, God. Philly's probably really horrible in their world, too, right? Have you ever been to Philly? <laughs> God. Oh. I think the Ooh. Philly they're specifically referring to as a nearby settlement, not actually Philadelphia proper. It can't be any worse. Philadelphia is just like the most depressing place in America. You can go to where they wrote the uh, the uh, Declaration of Independence, and you can walk outside, and in under one minute, you can be on uh, look down the either side street, and people are just smoking crack and laying in the streets. God oh. bless America. Yeah, sounds like some areas of Austin. Okay, yeah. So you've seen this beautiful urban. Hey, kids, you seen all that plight? <laughs> Thank you for subbing, Naughty Dragon. That really helps. Maybe I went back up to 852. No, 851. Yeah, that one person coming and going is always the prelude to the bot attack. Like someone joins so they can quit during the bot attack. It's like, well, with 450 people can only watch us for 90 minutes. All right, so episode five. Oh, this is this, this is a cringe little thing. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh the, she basically say, said, say. like, do you want to have sex? And he's like, I don't know. Huh? Who they think See, sex is that, gross in this world? That actually kind of lends itself to how the Brotherhood is portrayed more kind of religiously dogmatic in this than we've seen before. It's kind of like a Catholic, like you can't touch yourself sort of thing. So he's been trained that that's a that's a bad thing. You don't do that. It's gross. Um, I guess they don't have the same kind of feelings that uh, we do because I was just like, yeah. I'm gonna do this anyway. Yeah, I mean, earlier on, there he's in the like the barracks and he sees somebody doing it, but that right I there that. That, that 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 kind of lends itself to my argument that he thinks that he's like the most pious of all of the 
of the brotherhood like he's really sticking to all the rules which is why he thinks he's deserving of the armor and he's deserving to bring the the, the item back that everybody's looking for that's kind of so like he sees to... himself above everybody else all right so he's a bad actor and he's a snob <laughs> at least the snob part maybe with the character as opposed to the actor but yeah i think so he just doesn't understand because he's basically kept his nose buried in the books it seems like it's highly likely he didn't get good guidance from the director or this character is supposed to be like so we saw some theories about how like it, it had some similarities to master chief and maybe they're leaning into that hard to totally say at this point yeah and i certainly hope the chaptering i've been so slavishly putting into the description works out when this is over it seems to magically appear but it's not working right now who cares though we're live and hey <laughs> um at this point couldn't he like all right i buy the stoic look through combat but why doesn't he look engaged and interested that this pretty girl is talking to him he's in disbelief uh, it's like a when, smile. When, when when you grow up let's say you grow up and uh i've never grown up uh, when when a parent <laughs> this is something called a double binding in psychology and that is yeah <laughs> 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 I was waiting for a reaction. Sorry, Snail. I knew your point was about to get interrupted and derailed. Yeah, that's okay. Guys, we're gonna guys we're gonna pause for just a second here. Guys, uh I I guess you, you need to see this one for yourself. Uh uh. Here it is. Um, I need to make that a little bigger. Oh, wow. I've already embiggened it just about as much as I can, but let me see if I can't get it a little larger. Guys, uh, you're not going to believe how weird this fucking guy looks. Uh, good on them for making him so goddamn weird. Uh, he couldn't be weirder. He's about to get a lot larger on your screen. I'm almost done embiggening him, as Doomcock likes to say. Uh, that's about as big as I can get it. Here we go. Uh, boom! Uh, he, he, he looks as, as he, he looks as weird as you think. Um, it's strange. Uh, and it doesn't look better in motion. The one eye. Be aware of stay out of level 12. <laughs> um, there we go. It is really unnatural. Although it's not a right or a left eye, it's it's they 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 took the time to design a center eye for this character. I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, I give them credit for that. We're at fifteen fifty eight, and we're starting again in three, two, one, action. Stay out of level twelve. Obviously, we prefer you not go there. Huh? That means we're going there. I like how he has two distinct eyebrows. Now, those yes. scientists in, in Vault 2, was it Vault 2? They were real uh, dicks. This is the kind of thing they would do. Yeah, this is in Vault 4, the one we were shown in the ad. It was the Vault like that was going to be all scientists. To experiment on. Oh, I think that some people fell out of favor and got experimented on, or they fucked around too much. Something... But they also kind of uh, they mentioned it earlier, but they kind of glossed over it that some of the dwellers in this vault have come from the surface as well. Those damned surface dwellers. So we've got things like uh, two nose. This guy's pretty nosy. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to go cling on, but nose. it didn't work. Yeah. What's this guy's damage? He's got mitten hands. He's a lobster. He's a lobster, man. Lots of people have one eye. Yeah, well, I mean, pirates. <laughs> <laughs> He's too stoic. He took all that in far too easily. Yeah. He also isn't like reacting to this pretty girl in this world of shit that he lives in who likes him. This I've vault, never known a soldier who doesn't want to get laid. Alien woman. 
<laughs> I'm just saying, what, show me the soldier who doesn't want sex. The one who's missing his dick? Well, I think he does. He just doesn't realize it yet because it's nothing he's ever really been exposed to or thought about. And here we are back in the uh, 1950s like aesthetic. Oh, he's become typecast because of the ads, and he used to be a cowboy actor, so that's part of his yep. pain here. Yeah, he, he's basically the spokesman for the company she works for, Vault Tech. Yeah, but that's the only reason anyone survived. I mean, he's a hero. He's a hero. Kidding. Let's, let's see. So it's a genetic right. experiment to bolt that they got themselves into. I thought as much. Something weird had happened there. It's the one full of scientists. <laughs> With too much time was, on their hands. They, they grabbed some actual regular people or something and fucked with them. I will update the layout again. Whoa! Guys like Bud Askins. You know, when I'm out of weed, or when I'm out of rolling paper, but I have weed, and I'm asking people for a rolling paper, I'm Bud Askin. How about, I don't know about you. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else. That was a little bit of a reach, but I like it. Yeah, we have two. We have New York is great. We, you can see a baseball game, or you can even go see the Mets. Uh, we have both. We have baseball team, and we have the Mets. But the Mets, so few fans that you can sit up in the uh, upper deck and vape weed during the game. When it gets warm, I'm definitely going back to do that. And even if somebody sees you, they don't want to kick you out because they want those numbers so they can show yeah. later on. Hey. Yeah, it used to be about sneak, sneaking down to the front row. Now it's just like, I I get the TV view from here. I don't give a fuck. I'll just watch. I'll watch the goddamn game. So this is the world they lost. No. Well. There are two major powers in this world right now, and the, the U.S. and uh, in the games, it was originally just China. I think they've kind of roped in USSR as well. Okay. But kind of like the communists versus capitalists, that kind of thing. It's like if the Red Scare never stopped. It's cool. He's This guy was a cowboy actor, so it's, it works out just fine that he has a Native American pal. We got our DAI done organically. Yeah, we didn't de we didn't derail and destroy the movie to do it. No, he was actually a, a, a another actor. The, yeah, they acted yeah, together. He, so yeah, it makes total sense. And he's not gay, and he's not the bestest ever, and he's not going to overwhelm the scene. I think he's going to say his piece and move on. Now, some people don't like how this starts talking about like private corporations and them making money and things like that. That's very vault. Tech and part of the Fallout franchise. So this they're is not all, a, a woke they're change 50 of things. Years in the future. They're 50 years yeah. in an imaginary future. So their companies are evil. So fucking what? Yeah. I mean, and, and this has long been established in the game. So this is not some like woke change. It's just historians is say that like, if you have a if you have a democratic capitalistic society, like given enough time, if it goes bad, it will go bad like one of two ways. You can go like way too uh capitalistic is called mercantilism that's when the government and the people exist to serve companies right mm -hmm. that happened to the british the whole all the pirates movies with the east india company how they're the bad guys but they wear british military mm -hmm. uniforms yeah your company used to be able to hire its own um its own army and they would be like commissioned and treated like regular soldiers
Uh oh. What kind of meeting is this? That sounds vaguely like a threat, doesn't it? Sounds like something. Are we are we actually going to um have a black female villain? Is this show going to go there? If she's not trending towards being cool or sympathetic here, certainly trending towards being suspicious and cagey. She is sus as fuck. I can say right now, if I had to choose a nuclear war or leaving my dog out there while I went to a vault, I'd stay out with my dog. I like my dog better than most people. Yeah. And I have to say, if I was back with my ex-wife and my only choice was the whole world had to end for me to get away from her, then, you know, you, sorry, guys. <laughs> Not living like that. That's fair. I ain't mad. I don't know why you're so hung up on freedom of choice. It's like he lives in a democracy or something. What, what's with this guy? Yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah. These people and their desire for freedom. What next? Is he going to demand to know the outcome of the election? Craziness. Crazy. Call vacation, lady. It's also called smart. You just get away from the big cities, and there's a greater chance you're going to live without having to hunker down in a vault. For yeah, dying is bad. Dying is bad. If you're so sure that this is the way things are going, maybe, maybe, maybe you know, start spending weekends in the country. I don't know. I, I would say this: obsessively watching the news would probably be worse than death, though. It's like. Be like, you need to know ahead of time to use the, the shelter. You need to watch the news all the time. It's like, yeah, you know, fuck it. Not even going to buy a vault. I've watched enough news. I give up on humanity. We don't deserve to make it. I'm trying to figure out where I've seen this actress before. I know her. Is she maybe on Walking Dead or something? Uh, Man in the High Castle. Okay. Episodes of the yeah. Boys. I've seen Man in the High Castle. Maybe I remember her from the Boys. Oh, is she like one of the corporatist people from the Boys? I don't recall. I haven't finished the series. I haven't seen. I'm like two seasons behind now on the Boys. The, the last episode I saw was uh, the one where, uh, where, 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 uh, what's his face, Fish Boy, cuts the whale in half by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> how is he so naive and stupid i guess he's myopic like he just he's got her folder and everything but he didn't oh god <laughs> what are we doing here
His eye's not a little to the left. It's perfectly centered. Yeah. Well, he has nothing but contempt for the surface dwellers. Do they have enough coffee they can let it lay around and get moldy? I guess there's one vault that just grows coffee. You want to I be in the so. vault that grows coke. You want to be in the vault that grows Snickers and cocaine. It's like we got what you want, motherfuckers. We want the <laughs> we want food. I'd like to see the Snickers plant. I have a Snickers plant. Every once in a while, I pick a Snickers right off of it and peel off the Snick the leaves and eat the Snickers fruit right out of the uh, Snick right off the plant. Man, I made it to nearly forty one years old before I knew that Snickers grew on trees. <laughs> oh yeah, no, of course they do. Of course, most of them grow in California, but I I keep special conditions here in my apartment so my Snickers tree can grow. And uh, I have a permit from the state; I can grow up to six Snicker trees uh, and sell the uh, Snickers. <laughs> at least he's like the rest of us when when he tells a joke that's good he forgets it too <laughs> this guy's just surrounded by coffee cups is that a joke about woke ah yeah i don't know Wow, it's like, you know, she talked about Fight Club. I know. I mean, there's nothing you could do to make somebody want to go investigate something than to than to react like that. I mean, obviously she's going to Yeah. Be and also, he's a fucking moron. She's dressed like the rest of them, and he doesn't think she's a vault dweller. Well, it is kind of suggested that this vault, there was five generations in only this vault because they didn't have a cross program between other vaults like 31 32 and 33 so that right. they're probably all inbred and done. that's fine with me. i think they're scientific and freak experiments but maybe that is true that be, be, yeah that would explain a, a lot they're dumb they, they, they're definitely dumb they're david lynch dumb yeah there's dumbest characters it, in david lynch movies it, it could be column a and column b because vault tech actually didn't always put their best and brightest in positions of power or authority Oh, that's Sometimes they were actually letting had... the dummies run or run everything just to see what would happen. I love their Frankenstein setup here with their advanced vacuum tube and stuff technology. But uh, yeah, when vault sends us their overseers, they don't send us their best anymore. They're not that's sending right. Kyle McLaughlin. They're not sending Leslie Uggams. They're sending one-eyed freaks. <laughs> They're Why sending one-eyed Cyril Figgis. We need a, we need a fucking wall. Keep out these freaking fallout freaks. Hey, Tim, what's going on? He has his eye on you then. Vault 69. Vault 69. That's the nice they vault. Live, they live by rule 34. <laughs> <laughs> I'll forget that joke tomorrow. She's kind of hot. She really is, and kind of scary too. She looks like she could be in yeah. the like, family somehow. Yeah, it's kind of like I'm afraid what you would do to me. I might like it, but I don't know is for she how Terry long. Terry Hatcher's grandma. But I really want to try like Terry Hatcher, but she's only like thirty. Right? She looks a little like Terry Hatcher in the face, but she's only like thirty. Is yeah. it Terry Hatcher's granddaughter? Or is her daughter just older and looks great? She has great looks. How old is Terry? How old is Terry Hatcher now? Like Terry Hatcher's like ninety, right? Um, I don't know. I mean, not not that old. Sure. Old. Terry Hatcher's fifty nine years old. That's only 19, think about that. 18 and a half older than me. Yeah, think about that next time you watch Tango and Cash. She was so good looking that she got paid to work in a strip club and not strip in that movie. <laughs> That's power. No kidding. Uh, once again, 
like where's where, where is any registering of what like this unusual so he's never seen this stuff before he's brotherhood of steel right sooner or later mm -hmm. the gene pool will be diluted says uh, okay Tim. i think they, what you mean is siphoned down right because we don't have a lot of variation these people haven't married out in yeah 200 years uh and he may have not actually been in a vault before but Brotherhood knows of vaults, and I'm sure they've been in some of the abandoned ones, and they have had run-ins with vault dwellers before in the games. So he would have had knowledge of them, but maybe just not actually been in one himself. Some sense of wonder would have been worthwhile, you know what I mean? Yeah. He just sees things that he probably has never seen before, like plentitude of food, and he's just like, so, uh, gift basket. Sugar bombs. Cool. Like, you know, just, yeah, just, there you go. And, and they're, I mean, their environment though again is great. Like their sets again are great. They did a lot with with a little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thanks everybody for watching, holding steady at a believable seven people. <laughs> if you can watch seven on two the devices, that was, so the seven greatest people I know and the one greatest person I know over on Rumble. Thank you. If you guys get a chance, do me a favor. Uh, if you can, just share uh, the link and tell people we're here or watch on two devices. Get my number up because that bot attack is going to leave a fucking mark. They do it to me every Saturday now. Some would say that's a sign I've got the enemy on, a run, on the run, huh? You certainly got their attention. Oh, boy, do I ever have their attention. It's like, let's boost our enemy, Admiral Teague. <laughs> oh yeah slippers and everything he must be in heaven yeah he's he's never had luxury no and he's not reacting you know what i mean he's more Character confused good, now, i think story bad he's i mean I'm not, I'm not saying stoic that he's stoic throughout this though that's his only two looks come on yeah i'm not i'm, I'm not so justifying it Okay, I'm just okay, saying, I'm okay, trying okay. to find some sort of logical thing there where somebody oh, would say, hey, this is how we play it. Oh, I absolutely welcome you speculating in world. I'm just, I'm scoffing a little bit because that's just, I'm like, I, I, I feel what you're doing and don't, don't, don't stop or feel bad. Oh, look, 420 behind him. So they got the date right for this. Oh, and this is their California, Texas Republic at war museum, right? Isn't that the alliance? <laughs> California because those two states have so much in common. I mean California yeah. is just exactly like Texas. As soon as I saw that that thing for the movie, I thought, no, nah, there's no way that's happening. Well I think we all know about the uh the the, the, the Texas uh, uh trans rights law and the California open carry law. Uh we, we all know about that how how similar these two places really are. It's like Switzerland and Sweden or Australia and Austria. They're exactly the same. They are. Exactly. So this is kind of, we get a little bit of the timeline here. Here we go. Okay. 2189. Shady Sands founded. 2198. Yeah. Oh, wow. We're beyond. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's 2296 now. The fall of Shady Sands. Was that the nuking? Yeah. Okay. Well, it so suggests, it suggests that like the fall of Shady Sands, like things started falling apart and then somebody nuked them. Or we're heading towards nuking. Right. Well, the, the Shady Sands is already gone. That was that big pit that they came up on. That's where uh, Maximus was a kid. He, he was one of the few survivors. Oh, the two-headed bear. That's great. And it didn't even take a two-headed bear to take out Titus the Knight, who's a real dick. Yeah. And by the way, the Brotherhood of Steel, like, they just give those suits away without any, like, self-destruct thing in them. Like, I guess he doesn't have it anymore, though. They stole the power cell. Yeah. And you know Although what? I guess the part one, part two argument, like, yeah, why do they have him shortcut his way to have that suit to have him not have it, right? That is a little yeah. bit weird. I guess they they probably suffered from the same thing as some of the Master Chief or Halo writers that they wanted to get him out of it so that he could emote more. Unfortunately, he doesn't emote. Yeah, all right. All right. We, we hired a guy who's got like professional physical acting skills and that's it to move in this suit. And they're like, let's get him out of the suit so he can do things he's unable to do. One thing about the subtitles I don't like, don't tell me what kind of music this is. <laughs> I'll decide if it's ominous or not. 
one thing they haven't done in these subtitles that they do in all Disney and MCU shows, uh, Disney Star Wars and MCU shows, is that they put things that the actors are supposed to get across on screen into the uh, into the text. Have you noticed yeah. that? Yeah. Like it says scoffs, and that is something the actors but like your hearing impairment will not stop you from seeing the actor scoff so why it's there i don't know and it's in every single episode of every disney show someone scoffs it's usually the female character when the male is talking well, about something disney also sense. does things where they give away things like what was it in uh, mandalorian where it's like it's like uh they see the dark troopers in their in their pods or whatever but no, nothing in the show said they were dark troopers so they gave away the spoiler I don't know. And yeah, all the dark it. troopers that we knew, they were now robots. The dark troopers that we knew of, they were like they, they were they were, they, were, they had no, they were organic. They're people. Yeah, that's from the uh, Dark Forces games. And the other guys in black, the Death Troopers, we saw them in um, Rogue One, which people say yeah. is like the one good Disney movie. What I would say is. That was an enjoyable movie and a fun trip to the theater, but I don't know if it was really all that good. So what if the last King of Scotland's a good actor? Well, how, how much of that movie is he really in? And to Star Wars fans, is is it me or is Order sixty six now the most failed ever military order? Oh yeah, everybody survived it. Nobody, only a few people were hurt. Even ones that have been confirmed that didn't survive it have survived it. Not even the younglings were harmed. Yeah. Order 66, my ass. Luke, your father wanted you to have this. He killed a lot of children with it. That's Z right. Z Z your, your father wanted your, your father wanted you to have this. After I cut him to pieces, your mother installed something to make it vibrate. But you don't want it for that. <laughs> it will still sound quite the same when you deploy the blade. Luke picks it up, he puts his finger on the button, he goes, no, 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 not that button. Right. The other how button. Did Obi-Wan, how did my mother die? Funny story there, not not too sure, but uh, Yoda and I placed this together. Uh, we believe that he used your father as a 5G tower to give her a case, a case of the fatal sad. She just died. Uh... She, she is a mate, mighty Nabu and a good friend. Save her? Well, of course I could have saved her. We have advanced medical technology. No one thought to use it. Yoda was quite determined that the children be adopted out. She was just a loose end. So are they establishing now that ghouls, they can regenerate? If you put a uh, finger back on? I think it I is. is they can, if it, if they it's can piece just themselves him. back together. Because that's, that's a very Terminator self-repair. Yeah, because it's... Yeah. It, it, they don't have that kind of healing ability in the games. I mean, I guess unless you count like if a irradiated one can heal them with radiation, but it's this kind of suggested unique, he's a though. different type of ghoul. Yeah, he's a day one ghoul. He was turned into a ghoul day one. It seems well, like the other people sort of fell into it from smoking ghoul crack or whatever. No, 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 no. Plenty of people were ghouls before the war. Plenty of people. Um, well, yeah, mean, Plenty of winter. He was... I think Winter. he was chemically like altered, like kind of we, because yeah, yeah. like he suggested like something about the chemicals he's taking, the drugs he's taking, that might be part of why he's still around. So I think it, I suspect it, it was either done to him against his will, or he asked somebody to do it to him so he could continue to live. No, I, I think that's he, getting I into think other stuff. Got changed his DNA got changed yeah, in the no. past, and I, the chemicals yeah. he gets is just so he doesn't turn feral. Yeah. And he was in the know about how not to go feral from beforehand because this was maybe somewhat foreseen by the people who uh, unleashed this epoxynix and made the the vault tech stuff. Yeah, I don't want to get into some of my more the more details of my theories because it gets into the other episodes we're not going to cover today. Yeah, but you're definitely welcome to come back and we finish this off next week. I think this leaves us with only two more episodes this season, so next week will be the shortest watch party. But there will probably be 450 bots there again. Come for the show. Stay for the bot swarm. On the real yeah, world. we should just Blade outlast Runner. them. Just outlast them. Just once they disappear in the stream, start a new one. Hope they don't come back. 
<laughs> they only last four years. <laughs> yeah, once well, once the bots show up, just kill the stream and be like, we'll be right back to all you real people. <laughs> They're gonna ruin my analytic one way or another. If they strip away all the analytics from another show, I only got the people who watched after the watch party was over. So it was like I had 101 live watchers or something that like sucks. that. They reduced it to like 22. Yeah, okay, it turned this, it into the weakest stream I've had in like history. These flashbacks are killing it for me. Mm -hmm. They're they're too frequent. Um, they're see, not flashbacks; they're flash bangs because we're going too far back too <laughs> often. I'm being I'm being I mean, serious. I feel like I'm being flash banged. I I don't mind it because it, it's saving it's serving the same narrative port part as all like the terminals and notes that you find in the games. Because there is a ton of backstory in the, provided in the games, but you have to find them. But it's you're still just being provided to us here. You're still in game, and these flashbacks it takes me in and out of yeah the world. I mean, I what understand it. It doesn't bother me. One but I get it. Could we have had one wall dedicated episode to the ghoul? No, I think it was just do one well, a flashback every episode. That would been... It's it's because they're drip feeding us backstory on like, oh, geez. what, what Vault Tech is it. is really up to that kind of parallels with what Lucy's experiencing in her time. I believe this is a real cemetery with vaults. I think Hollywood Forever is a real place. I think Marilyn's buried there and Joe DiMaggio. Oh, Thanks everybody for making us your your Fallout Entertainment choice. Yeah, so this is a ritual that the surface Hello, dwellers Novus that they've Renaissance. taken. In. Sorry, I missed you there. Been kind of hung up on this one too. This it's a good show, but yeah, this one's one of the weirder episodes as far as this director is wrapping and marbling the past story through the other story. Whereas in the last one, yeah, we just had the flashback, I guess, at the beginning and then like towards the 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 middle of the end. Yes. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Hey. We went, all right, yeah. Nudity. Not all some boobs are better than others. Come on. Let's see. Not all poops are made equal. Come on, Lucy. Lucy. Get Lucy. Get Lucy Goosey. Yeah, I don't know if, if you caught it, but that, that's a ritual that like the surface dwellers that they brought in to the vault do every now and then. Like, get all naked from the waist up and, and act yeah. a little strange. We get to see her boobs. They're small, but they're mighty. Guys, you know, <laughs> definitely go in the theater and look at the boobs. You know, um, I'll give up the analytic for now. We had 450 people watching. I could have like two for a couple of minutes. But y'all, come on back now. Oh, someone is going to die now. Because we've seen breasts. Or they're going to eat someone. It all works out for me. By the way, no, the real number appears to be 144 of you have been through here. Thank you. Cool. All right. Hey, we got the first omen in theaters, right? And we got like a satanic ritual here. Cool. Well, they have that in. Uh, they have a lot of um, uh, Lovecraftian lore in Fallout. Yes, this is really like starting to remind me of Ahsoka. There's so much witchcraft, except this witchcraft don't, makes sense. Don't miss this. That's her. Dun, dun, dun. So a few people have managed to live a few hundred years. Yep. I gotta say, this one is really weirdly 
strange, but it's not, it's still not stupid or anything. Like we haven't approached anything like Star Trek Discovery stupidity. I I just feel cheated that she took off her she didn't take off her outfit, but like okay, let's see his acting here. Oh, he's slightly smiling. How do they get oysters? How do they get caviar? Other vaults grow them. But caviar seems like a stupid ass resource to make. Yeah. All right, now he's back to being like a motionless robot. Okay, he's, he was able to smile, but his delivery is really bad. Yeah. I mean, is is, is he on the spectrum? No, th this is what I wanted to explain before. The actor or the character? <laughs> the double Either. binding. <laughs> this is the slap in his face. Uh, double, <laughs> a double binding is how you create a schizophrenic from childhood. You tell them, oh, I love you. Then you slap their face. And that you, those two actions saying... conflict, and that creates a double binding within you. What he has just been giving is the caressing on the face and told them he's a good boy. Her coming in and saying that is a slap in the face. And that is what he constantly gets, so he can't really know when something is good or bad. So <coughs> he has to stay in one... Anything. Exactly. So he has to stay in one mode all of the time and right now he dared smiling so he reverts back to oh, what that, he was that works I, to when he revealed himself to a squire too because he like had a moment of vulnerability and then was betrayed yeah okay okay i so see it that that could be it i don't know but that's the uh, psychological thing of it we're trying we're trying folks yeah, I just have to think that there is a reason that he is like this because everybody else is it at least decent, if not the great. The reason is he's a very bad actor. Yeah, but I, they were so and good with basically everybody else. I can't believe that they would stick with him and not just like recast him and say, "All right, we're gonna have to reshoot some scenes." Uh, you know what? He's 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 in a lot of jeopardy anyway. See through the season, try to nurse him through to a point where he gets the character, try to track the character towards someone very like, like, like one dimensional, for lack of a better term, and see okay. if you can rescue him. You know what I mean? Like, he has a three year contract. If it's okay. anything like a regular TV show, you know what I mean? That's usually it's a three year contract. Whoa, that's a gold thing with the finger mouth. I don't get that. Like, I don't get it. It was cool as like fuck. It. The rule of cool is the reason we saw it. It does not make a lot of sense unless it started out as a human. No, the, uh, the gulper is... Uh, they are in the game, but... Yes, I know, but the fingers for the mouth, inside yeah, the mouth, that, the teeth. It's not even finger cool. Nails. It was cool enough to blow my mind. I don't know if, like... If you have to stretch it to anything, go back to uh, the labyrinth with David Bowie, where... Oh. Uh, uh, oh, good Connolly falls down that hole with all the hands. Yes. Although I'm asking, I would ask you this then: Are you saying that we're doing cool things just because they're cool, and not to serve the story? And then maybe this well, is I didn't not want to mention this had. earlier, Teague. But oh, what the fuck! Remember how you asked if they might be part human? Hmm. This is birth. This is childbirth. I don't know what you call it when it's fish. Or toads. Wait, she gave birth to those things that are eating her? Yep. In that tank that she, is right behind Lucy. They didn't have to do this to her. This is something the Institute would do. Yeah. Well, they're descended from scientists and they're like sofa kings and they're wee Todd. I mean, it, it, it's kind of the the idea of when you put a whole bunch of scientists together without any morals on what they can and can't do. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. what, I mean, what I, I didn't like his performance as like Kang, but Jonathan Major said like in Loki, he made that performance. Like what if the wizard gets bored and this is what happens if the wizard gets bored with science. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like, 
Jonathan Majors is only in trouble for fucking yelling at somebody. He should be uncanceled. And he's free of Disney, which he may come out of this smelling like a rose because, like, uh, like Michael Douglas said, fuck doing it. I think Paul Rudd is ready to say fuck it, too. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. They're all done, pretty much. Although, I, if you're Paul Rudd, it's like, I haven't made as much money as these other people. I don't have the hardware they do. Do I stick around for my one more big payday because they so need me? Like, everyone's got to have they so need me disorder at MCU now, right? Like, Chris Hemsworth, more than anyone, it's like, they fucking need me. Mm-hmm. I'm the only one left in that original universe. Nailed the accent. Thank you. I got to pay you a compliment, compliment every now and then so you don't force choke me through the screen. That's right. Everyone is here because they're so afraid of me. The, when Bird of Prey 5 agreed to do the video saying that I was like uh, terrorizing him and ruining his life, that I could play before my show, that was the best. He's like, yeah, why not? That sounds like fun. I'm like, only do it if you think it's going to be fun. He's like, if I don't have fun, I won't. I won't make it. And he's like, you know what? I had fun. And that was like the frame was seven minutes long. It's like, do I, do I understand why Admiral Teague thinks these things? The man doesn't come across as safe. Oh God. She threw ash like in his eyes. They're breaking case of emergency gun as a spear gun. Cause they're making hybrid fish people. And nobody in here is playing with a full deck. Even if they have genius IQs randomly, they can't focus them. Everyone here is fucked up. Mm -hmm. And this, this is the Branch Davidian vault. These people are Branch Davidians in this world or something <laughs> like that. I don't know what else to call it. And thanks to everybody for making us your choice for watching. It's really, really, really um, a compliment. And wow, look, we get you. is that an emotion? The episode ends just in time to tell him out from doing any acting. The jury is out. It's like, okay, I know you've had difficulty with this so far, but all I need you to do is eat popcorn and smile. I can do that. And it's, it's like, and could you imagine? It's like we've been trying to do this take for three days where he eats the popcorn and smiles. What can we do? It's like, have you tried putting Pornhub on the TV he's watching? We'll do it now. And it's like, finally, it's like, and they're like, no, no, it's not a take. We're just doing this for laughs. And he's like, smiled because he was and like, and then they're like, all right, we got it. And they're like, you know what? We think we've got this. Don't worry about it. We're not going to do another take. And he's like, okay. He's better at acting when he doesn't know he's acting. He's like, that's his performance. His, his acting enhancing drug is not being aware that he's acting because if he tries to act, he seems like someone who's acting. Exactly. <laughs> his gift is that he always seems like someone pretending to be doing something that he's not doing. <laughs> Uh, We've never watched the credits before, so let's see how we do. Are they different for every episode, or is this what we think? I think they're a little bit we... different. They show different areas of the wasteland, I think. Yeah, that didn't go on near, nearly as long as some of the other outros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 14, 15, 15 people before we got to anybody with a real job. We got to count these. We count <laughs> producers here. That's what we do. Um, and let me just write down the time code of when this episode ended. At uh, so, so that with this chapter, and it doesn't seem to be working, I can try it again later. Uh, that was a long one. And uh, so episode six ended. We have two episodes left. Uh I'm still interested in these people. I still care about them. I still want to know what happens in their world. Is it starting to get weird in a David Lynchy kind of way? Yes. Yes, it it absolutely is. Um, I don't know. I guess I, the poll will have to wait till next week on this one. I didn't do a poll for the last episode. I don't know. Um, I guess I'll let the uh, I'll let the panel say what they think of it. This episode was if if episode one was like a seven point five, right? So that, and we haven't gotten better than that. So if episode one is a 10 in the world of these episodes, you see how I'm recontextualizing it there? Yeah. So okay. if episode one was a, was a 10 for Fallout, I'm thinking we got like, this one was like a six for Fallout. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't 
the most compelling fallout episode and we got a lot of backstory that maybe could have been doled out better or earlier or in small this one did have a little bit of bipolar disorder this third one this was a c plus yeah. wasn't See, a b this, minus it wasn't a this b one if we're contextualizing the first episode as a 10, I would give this one a seven, but that's only because they teased out or they waited to kind of start showing the darker side of vault tech for the people who don't know the games. Cause if you don't know the games already, that has been out there for a long time. So they saved this for people who don't, who might not have seen that twist coming on that vault tech is just out there, just kind of fucking around with whoever they care, whoever they want to, they don't care about anybody. So I can understand why they waited this long. And also the real the, the reveal that Moldaver is both in the past and the present, um, but yeah, otherwise it, it it didn't need to be this long. You could have done the exact same reveal and the exact same important story beats at forty five minutes or less. Right, and uh, just 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 really quickly, this happened. Okay, this this fucking happened during again uh, the most artificial bot swarm of all time. Please let me keep those hundred forty four real views. Those that the 450 live views never registered or impacted the watch time. I thank all real people who watch this. Uh, this last episode was mid for the series, but like, what are you gonna do? You got eight episodes at some point, you do have to like disgorge story. They chose the approach where they were exciting and maybe out over their skis just a little bit for one, two, and three, and then in four, five, and six, as we saw today, like. It didn't grind to a halt. We throttled down. Would that be fair to say? We throttled down a bit. Yeah. And uh and and we gave some backstory and and uh that's pretty much the story of the middle of Fallout. And we'll be back next week with uh the end of Fallout, I guess. And I hope you'll be back with this beard. Um any I'd final like thoughts from around the panel? Uh uh just free free balling it here a little bit. And then if we want, we can talk about uh, some other things for a couple of minutes before we run. I guess we could end uh, on the hour uh, of the hour we're at. Does that look good for everybody to wrap this up? Sure. Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, I know uh, I saw some, some – I saw there was a, a slight mutiny here going on in the private chat. Looks like you guys will be together again tomorrow. Uh, tell <laughs> us about that first. Uh, Snail, seems like it's up to you to pitch. Go ahead and tell us about it. It's with our pal Tony. And Tony, if you're out there, hello. Hi. Uh, tomorrow I'm doing a uh, full review of the entire series with uh, Tony. Yeah, and, Jedi uh, Bill, you have a pass. Why, why, why aren't you here? And uh, we're, we're, uh, I'm going to be over by you in a little while. Uh, are, are you doing Mr. Lundell? Admiral Teague is bullshit. Star Trek is bullshit. <laughs> I want to congratulate <laughs> Mr. Lundell for his assessment of that. Um, I'm going to be over by you in a little bit. But if you want to come here. Use your pass. I'm sorry. Uh, so, Beard, you go first. What do you think? Um, I mean, I, I've kind of mentioned before, not to kind of, it doesn't really spoil anything, but just my attitude towards the series overall, I'd give it a 7, 5, or 8 out of 10. It definitely has its weak, weak points. Maximus, right. his acting and his story is definitely one of them. I don't really think they knew I won what you to do over. With him. Were you on the fence about that? Did I knock you off the fence? No, I, I still acknowledge it. I, I'm I'll still jump through you are, so trying you are to all, find you are some sort of logic. Sort of, okay, okay. So this is yeah. not news to you or anything that, that, no, that something's no. not quite great with 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 Titus. He's not great. I I, I recognize it. I'm just trying to figure okay. out the logic behind the people who created this on why they would have let that go through and let it happen without kind of changing something around. Um, he was good in the suit gonna, and he had the bulk to muscle it around because it's probably pretty hard. So two I'm, birds, I'm gonna, one stone. I'm going to save some of my thoughts regarding Maximus and his story uh, for next week because I don't want to get into any of the, the plot points there. Um, I don't know if it'll really right. change I'm anything, but I think it the might reconfigure. Performance. When yeah, you're well, done. yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, just overall, yeah. Like I said, uh, your previous stream, I said stick with it through its weak points. I think we got through yeah. some of the weak points in the in these episodes, um, but overall, it, it it's wasn't really horrible. Fun time. No. And I'm, I'm looking forward to where they're taking it, uh, where they leave the end of the series or the season. I'm really looking forward to it. There's a lot of potential there. I love these strange weirdos in this new vault. They're fun. This is a fun place. And we've got some David Lynch overtones um, going on. It's pretty yeah. cool. 
All right, Jedi Bill, I'll be talking to you in a few. Um, I'll throw you a Streamlabs pass and we can talk about this one or whatever. I'm not sure what's going on with that one. But um, I'm glad everyone liked the watch party. Uh, Snail, uh, do you have any thoughts on this, uh, the episodes we saw? The episode we just saw, it was medium. It, this it was, was the weakest nothing. one of all. Yeah. It was nothing, not, but not much happened. Interesting that, that they found level 12 and what's going on there. And we see how gulpers are made, essentially. That was kind of interesting. But beyond that, it was, a, it was not a strong episode, but it was... Uh, serviceable at no point have we made fools of ourselves or done anything completely stupid with the show where it was untenable unwatchable or 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 horribly dumb but uh it it, it in, in in these episodes uh each one a little less good than the one before but i don't feel like the show's in danger of uh, like spinning out of control and falling apart like I feel like if there's any problems going on, like they they they're more like we may need to have Maximus die. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we could easily swap him out with another actor from the Brotherhood of uh, Steel. And we saw someone who was in the Brotherhood of Steel who like showed like more emotion in his ten minutes as a knight than this guy has. Yeah, it might have something to do with his ability to move around in the suit with the helmet off. It was just like not too many people had the the strength and coordination to do it. And that might be more, might have been more important. Like I know, like anybody here own the the Star Wars uh, OT on like DVD back in the day with George Lucas's commentary. Did anyone own those? I mean, I've got the VHSs around here somewhere, but I don't think they had. Those commentary have a commentary on track on. They might have a commentary track on them. If they do, try to find it because George Lucas, uh, like sometimes he can be really candid, you know what I mean? And it'd just be like, you know, tell us right outright he fucked up. I may have gone too far in a few places. Or, yeah, you know, yeah. like when he tries to fix something, but he knows he, he fucked it I up. I may have gone too far in a few places. Or Stylistically designed to be that way, and you can't undo that, but we can diminish the effects of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure, George. That was him explaining the end of the Phantom Menace while he was had, had like a glass of wine in his hand and maybe had smoked a joint. But uh, like, <laughs> um, I I I I feel like they're they're establishing their tone a little bit at least. It has a David Lynch Twin Peaksy kind of tone, and I hope that that doesn't bring it in the direction of we want to also uh, just like we don't feel a need to pay things off. We, we we seem to be paying things off, and I like that. David Lynch, he gets away with not. Ryan Johnson thinks he's David Lynch. David Lynch is able to be so interesting that the payoff, like, if you don't get it, you don't get it. You know, it's like you know, you, Twin Peaks. It's been tw like twenty eight years. We have no fucking idea. We have absolutely right. no fucking idea. It's just it, we're never gonna know. It's, it's maybe it's been thirty years, but we, we we're never gonna know. There's there's no figuring it out. Um, but. Uh, with, with Fallout, it does seem to be going somewhere. Uh, their tone is like, like weird and lighthearted, but then they get like violent and weird. David Lynch just keeps coming to mind over and over. Is anyone else a fan of David Lynch? Not a fan. Uh, I just like what he does. This is a lot like Blue Velvet, especially cut with the cut off finger and like cutting off body parts. And David Lynch gets obsessed with uh with like voices and 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 like delivery and having people act in an extremely muted way. And like I I just I, Kyle McLaughlin wasn't in this by mistake. He was here to evoke a feeling because we haven't used him. I'm sad that we haven't seen him. But spoiler alert: It's a watch party. You can't spoil it. David Lynch is, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Kyle McLaughlin has not been back or seen. That sucks. I, I like, I mean, the, the show wasn't, well, the show definitely went off the rails, but the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I liked his part whenever he was, he was uh, in S.H.I.E.L.D. He was, because he went from zero to psychopath in like two seconds all the time, but he never yeah. broke from being eerily calm. That's the Kyle McLaughlin thing. Yeah. And I guess... Like he's just like he's he's had success everywhere in movies and in TV. He was in Sex in the City that was making him a lot of money. Um, so I mean, I wanted to see more of him, but I mean, this, this definitely seems like it's 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 uh, Lucy McLean's story. She's doing a good job. I like her. These people in this final vault. I mean, we've got to explain why they're so dumb and so fucking sadistic. I guess the last two episodes will do it. Looking forward to seeing them. 
I'm going to hold off, I guess, to look and watch party with the channel, hopefully next week. Um, where are we? We're in good shape here. Um, yeah. All right. So let's, uh, let, let, let's see. No one else has watched the horrors of Star Trek Discovery. Friends, you may remember me from such productions as STD Episode 1 and the horrors of STD Episode 4 more recently. This show is absolutely horrible and not Star Trek, but join me. The, sh the show is terrible. The watch party is fun. Everyone who watches it with me, we take it to Paramount. We take it to New Trek. And we can see that we got to them. Uh, I think we saw some evidence that Admiral Teague is getting under somebody's fucking skin here. Um, somebody who has the, uh, an army of bots enough to do this. That's called results, people. I'll live with it. If it I'll live with whatever they do to me. Um, I'm not going to change. I'm not going to back down. Wibber, do you ever bot swarmed like this before, man? No, I've never seen anything like this. The, the ponds I usually <laughs> swim in are too tiny to, for these fish to show up. That's because I've been punching up, and now I'm fighting with people who are so much tougher than me that if I lose, I'll be a hero, and if I win, I'm David. I'm David. The Goliath has <laughs> come for me. I will tell you right now that New Trek is fucking garbage, and look how desperate they are. Look on my screen. Look at that amassed watch time and um, that alleged engagement. How could that be true? How could any of this be fucking true? What a joke. And the, the, the fact that Paramount Plus has to troll a tiny YouTube channel with 850 members over and over. I must be doing something right. I think I got the right people fucking right people's fucking attention. Now, instead of trolling my channel and attacking me, I have a suggestion. Get rid of all of your shows and start over. Start over with something small. Put a couple of people on a ship. Don't talk about anything else but what's going on on that ship. Have that ship be on an exploratory mission. Well, on a weekly basis, go to planets. From time to time, have an Earth-like society on one of those planets that in some way reflects us. Watch a lot of the Orville and just do... 22 one-hour episodes that mostly make sense where they act military, go exploring, and they act moral and benevolent. And I guarantee you that that Star Trek show will do very well because and and have like characters on it that are that are that have friendship, loyalty, and will sacrifice for each other. And people will watch it. So instead of just trolling my channel, please pay attention to those things. If you do those things after you steal this night's work from me, like you stole my last week's work from me, you communist motherfuckers, for the love of God, allegedly communist motherfuckers, in my opinion, when you put on your fucking communist propaganda Star Trek Discovery, for God's sake, can you fucking have some dialogue that makes sense? For the love of God. The love of, you know what? Only one crew member needs to be in jeopardy for us to be concerned. Do you guys remember that? Remember the good old days when they kidnapped the Packlands, kidnapped Jordy? Remember that? We want to be strong. Who remembers that one? I do. Oh. You know, Star Trek could be so great. And now we've got this fucking nonsense going on. And it seems like they really, ever since the, the Strange New World uh, 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 watch parties, uh, there's been these waves of attacks and waves of, they're trying to fucking cancel me. They're trying to fucking silence me. They want, they know that I'm telling the fucking truth. I'm telling you, it's my fucking opinion that this fucking new Trek show is a fucking communist piece of fucking propaganda. I don't know if it comes from the Kremlin. I don't know if it comes from some fucking communist operation somewhere else in China. I don't know where the fuck it comes from. But we saw what happened. The proof is on the screen. The right people are fucking concerned. You know what? Um, we struck a blow tonight. When we talk about how our modern myths and our modern heroes teach us something about how to handle situations. Am I wrong? Beard, Snail, has there ever been a time in your life Maybe when you had a friend who was in trouble and you had something at stake and you had to think about like, you know, I risk something, my car, some of my money, a date with my girlfriend, something like that. But my buddy really needs me. You know what I mean? Like what comes first? Do I have enough friendship and loyalty that I would sacrifice for this person? And did, at that point, did you think like, what would Obi-Wan do or what would James T. Kirk do? Right. Right. What would Iron Man do? 
they would do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, right? And yeah. these people just don't want us to think that, right? What are, do these stories that we see from Disney and from any uh, forget about Fallout for a minute from from the MCU and from Star Wars and from Star Trek? Do they tell us anything about how like individuals can also be a team? No, of course not. It, it's almost like they they. They want to use individualism and bend it back on itself to make us all the same individual replicated over and over like good little Xeroxes so that we we do, we do their bidding. I, I just I, 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 I think that we just showed evidence that people and, and when this analytic goes back to like nothing again and Admiral Teague's work is just blown away. It's because I dared to give people something. That's 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 what's going on here. But uh you know what, guys? Yeah. Uh, pitch to, pitch what you're doing, and uh, we'll get out of here. Uh, rant over. Um, uh, but I, you know what? Um, when you're catching flack, you're over the target, right? Um, maybe <laughs> people don't like. You know what? Uh, not everybody likes baseball. I do, but um, you, you know do. what? Um, yeah, you know what? But uh, uh, oh, what's your team? Reds. Uh, well, Astros, because I'm Astros. near Houston. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I bet I was at the old Astro Dome. Uh, many many years ago but um that place was great uh they played stuff on the scoreboard uh for the home runs that i don't think they could ever show again but uh we'll talk about that <laughs> later um you know what yeah it was it was cool uh the astrodome was cool I, I i don't know i'd like to go back and see texas again but uh yeah okay. i like the yankees um okay here's the thing baseball the american game like they don't want that it's, and they say it in like the untouchables Right. Um, they don't want this message out there to Americans, the people who, who 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 wish ill on our country. They don't want Americans or anybody to know this one thing. And wherever you are, this is true. Life is a lot like baseball. If you trust the people that are on your team that, you know, are of goodwill, that, that, that are, that are going to do their best for you, you just do your best for them and you work as a team. Because your time to be an individual at the plate will come. And and life is about being both. And I think a lot of people want us to be so individualistic that we de devolve to anarchy. And then it will all conform to be the same thing. I think that's the ultimate goal of some of this I propaganda. Am, I'm so glad you went there with the baseball analogy because I was thinking that. But I wasn't going to bring it up because every time I do, people go, baseball is boring. And they forget. They don't pay attention to what I'm saying. But that's why I love baseball. That is the one sport where you are one person versus an entire team on the field. And it, it switches back and forth. And that's how, like you were saying, how life is. And that's how like a lot of the good Star Trek episodes, even other shows, that's how their shows were, are. You have the team, you have strength in the team, but you also have strength in the individual that sometimes has to go off and do their own thing. And they don't always need to be rescued by the team. Sometimes they do. So there is value in having both of those options. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, my, I'm just still like, my mind is just still blown that this channel can attract that kind of attention. But you know what? Again, wow. I feel, I feel like in a way we accomplished something because someone else out there got their message out. I, hopefully it wasn't, it was, it was someone who was being equally independent, but you see what they do when there's an independent voice, right? Like mm -hmm. what are we We're three pundits and we were pro this show. So I, I don't feel like it was Amazon. If Amazon would have done this, I think the bots would have been more well conceived, right? Because this, this 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 was not making an impression on on like the watch time or the amount of cumulative uh, people who watch the stream. It was just a right. really weird fake live count. Wow. Yeah. Not sure about that, that one. Yeah. That uh, YouTube can be bullshit, and does YouTube have its own <laughs> bots? I don't. Well, we, I don't know, uh, but. Uh, Anyway, um, I guess hopefully Jedi Bill's doing some karaoke tonight. If he is, I'm going to head over there. I'll be back tomorrow night around 7, 7.30 with uh, Admiral Teague's Saving Star Trek, where uh, we'll do some maybe some entertainment news, well, part of which is uh, Bot Swarm during the fucking uh, Halo, during, <laughs> during, the, during the live watch, uh, during the watch party. I want to thank everybody who came here, um, especially uh, the, the oh, Sci-Fi Mombi. It, Sci-Fi Mombi, you're a new member? I thought you were already a member. She rejoined. Thank you. Thank you, Sci-Fi Mombi, for joining um, and becoming a member. Hooray. Yes. Yes. Applause. Adieu. Hooray. Hi. Hi. Celebrate Hi. the Sci-Fi Mombi. And uh, she was with me for the episode three of Strange New Worlds. Jedi Bill will talk. 
Ray Lucard, uh, Tim, Beard of Liberty, thank you for being here. Novus Renaissance, I'm sorry I didn't see your uh, your 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 uh, your your chat in time. Greetings to the neutral zone. Saw you cruising in the sector of Mars at a friendly hail frequency. Brilliant job on all fronts. Thank you, thank you. And Tina, the naughty dragon, I saw you earlier today with uh, Mrs. Dadman. Thank you. Uh, the fallout episodes. Uh, the last one we checked on was five. That one was eighty-eight percent. It was uh, let's see. This it got fifty percent A, thirty-three percent C. So you can see maybe mid was starting to. It might, wait, was it fifty percent? Yeah, B fifty percent, A thirty-three percent, and C sixteen percent. So like apathy was starting to crawl bit crawl, crawl in, in in episode three, but. Uh, Tina, Jedi Bill, um, as I scan back, Jacob Ironside, thank you. Going the distance with us. Radioactive was here. Yeah, Radioactive saw it too. You know what? Bo uh, Beard of Liberty, man. Like we, were, we, we had Romulans, man. Cloaked <laughs> Romulans. Fucking Admiral Teague's fleet gets attacked. How does it yeah. feel, right? Padre was here. It was good to see Padre. Tim was here. Mark Harkness. Mark, you can get out of the pod now. It's safe. Nerd Portal life form. Nerd Portal knew the deal. The chat, much more in line with the 115 people that seem to have been here. Edge of time. It was great to see you, too. We love you all. And uh, I guess, did everybody get a chance to pitch and talk about the next thing we're doing is Tony's, right? You guys uh, are doing Tony's tomorrow, it looks like? Or Snell? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. And, uh, and other than that, I'm just every Monday night, uh, 8.30 Central, I'm over on After the Weekend. I, I linked that channel. I should have kept it handy so I could link it again. But... Uh, after the weekend on YouTube, or you can follow me on uh, X beard at beard of Liberty. And I always link it there. We do movie reviews from our childhood, typically from the eighties or nineties. Sometimes we stray from that. Uh, but the next one we've got coming up is little, little shop of horrors. Cool. Um, I, which one, uh, 1960 or like 1985, I think it is probably the 85. Cause that's typically what we go is kind of like think movies we saw when we were a kid or were growing up with. I so, don't think the black and white one's a musical. That's like the difference, right? Mm, I, I, the I black and white one's just ironically for me. fucking weird. Have you seen the black and white one? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, you don't know this. Jacob knows this, and other people know this about me. I'm kind of famously the guy that's on three different movie review channels, and I don't watch movies until I have to review them. So wow. I just so you I, rare, a rare appearance as an expert tonight. I, I guess so. Yeah. Usually it's a first watch for me, which it will be for a little shop of horror. So if anybody wants to check that out, feel free to drop in. Like I said, that's eight 30 uh, central in the evening on the channel after the weekend. Okay. Um, and I'll be back. Like I said, tomorrow night, Sunday around uh, seven 30, eight o'clock Eastern standard time. Snail seems to be AFK. Um, oh, I'm right here. Yes. Oh, you're here. All right, so tell us, uh, you're on with Tony tomorrow when on his channel, Stark of Iron? At 3 Eastern. And we are going Eastern. through, yeah, we're going through the entire um, Fallout show here. And talking lore. Uh, he's really big on lore. I'm just really big on playing the games. Yeah, well, I, you know what? Here we ask questions. What does God need with a starship? You know, a lot of He needs a, a lot of starship to make more Fallout games. Now get to it. Because we all know that Todd Howard is our god, right? Why? Our Lord and Why? Savior Todd Howard. I, all you had to do was pull the trigger. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tasha, do you want to give us your thoughts on the episode? Data, I'm only going to tell you this just once. It never happened. All right. Well, before I can end any show, I have to send my uh, my, my ship's counselor. She's an empath. Uh, there's a large resinous tar like creature who really calls all the shots on this show. Can you go ask Arbus if it's okay? Let us go. Not yet. You know what? Fuck Arbus. He's going to have to delete us. We're going. Well, I don't care what Arbus says. We love you all. Um, come back tomorrow night. Um, I'm going to turn off the TV here for a second. And uh, let's, uh, let's jump in the transporter. Uh, Transporter room lock on us. Uh, we'll see you guys later as we beam away. And uh, remember, we love you all. And uh, you know what? Uh, always turn into the skid when driving in the snow. Talk to you later. Bye.